You're listening to Power Stance Gaming Podcast, the number one podcast for gaming and hobby banter, with your hosts, Jacob, Greg, and Muddy. G'day everyone, Jacob Corner here, Power Sense Gaming. And uh, amazing to be here tonight with my amazing co host. Everything's amazing. I'm going to change my adjectives is it shortly. Not? Everything is awesome. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, don't Everything get me is awesome. That's Finn's favorite song. Yeah. Uh, uh, why it's awesome. shouldn't it be? Because uh, it is awesome. awesome. Yeah. Although, all right, while well, we, we're the, the song from the sequel, have you heard that? The Dylan Francis one? No. It's called The Catchy Song. And it goes. This song's gonna get stuck inside your head, and it does. It's so bad. It's like, ah, oh, it's just over and over again. This song's gonna get stuck inside you. So glad I'm not seeing a Lego Two movie. Yeah, I might skip that. Thank you. Well, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed the intro music, ladies and gents, because that was the song. All right. So, <laughs> host Muddy, how you doing tonight? Awesome. Greg, how you doing tonight? Awesome! It is awesome to be here and it's amazing. It's totally awesome, man. And I think I've opened a can of worms. I apologize in advance, listeners. Totally wicked, dude. I'm sorry. So sorry. What have you been up to, lads? How's the week been treating you? Um, it's only been a week, hasn't it? Week, week. What did we do? We had a couple of. I oh, know there was a couple of events on. Ten days. It's been ten days. Ten days. A couple of events. Um, and a Batman night. Mm, which one you want? Any you want to guys want to jump on? Well, one no, or? well, Kings. Okay, so give us a download. Okay, well, I played a bit of Kings. I played three games out of the four. They needed someone to buy bust the last one, so I fell on the sword for that one. But classic Greg move. Classic, yeah. It actually probably got me up some places. Classic Greg move. Yeah, that's what I said. I got a draw against Wilcox, which I would never have gotten any other way. Um, but had fun. Yep, took the high elves. Um, Danced around some towers, shot some fireballs one way, and then ran around the tower and shot some fireballs. No, I didn't do that. I just ran at people. And um, I think what did I end up? That, I, I, however, I, that is a valid high elf. Yeah, I actually, I did win a game. So, yeah, it was pretty good. Valid for high elves, not valid for seventh cab. We'll just put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> and let it go. Yep. <laughs> good coffee, by the way, mate. I got to say. Made I'm enjoying my, my doppio. Made oh, by my own yeah. self. It doppio, eh? Yeah. yeah. Hard work it was, pressing the buttons. Yeah, it, took, it took a while to figure out how to work a, the machine, right? It's taken me about a year now. I uh, want to see... five attempts of being told if I don't use it. Mm. I want to see you use your 3D printer because if you can't work that coffee we machine... We should just get a six-pack and come around next time he's printing because I want to see I, it too. Yeah. <laughs> you reckon he's just throwing <laughs> blue tack at it, hoping it's up the sticks. <laughs> anyway, a bit of a digression. Did you beat the spread? Uh, so I think in the end I ended up being I think I, I think I got eight out of eight out of twelve. So to me that's mid that's mid tier, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's bottom of the mid tier, <laughs> but it's still mid tier. <laughs> uh, well, maybe okay, if I had right. played the last game, I would have I would have you would have I would have got a more. massive win and up to maybe fifth. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll check the math on that and get back to you. <laughs> I think I did all right for someone that hasn't played a game of kings since the last. Event is that the first and time taking about a year elves to a competitive event? That's too? the first time I've ever taken elves as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good effort. Yeah, and I didn't write a list for it. I just took. I went. Oh yeah, I got one of them. Yeah, throw that in. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Bit of that. Oh yeah. Yeah, because the first thing they said is like, oh, you got the plus one to hit on the archers. I'm like, yeah, nah, yeah. no, nah, just pretty much pick the units and put them on the tray. <laughs> you should get JT to write your list. I don't. Well, he he wouldn't know how to write a king's list. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Not sure about that. Old JT is good with the maths, so uh, he could easily smash our list. Oh, I'll have, to, I'll have to hit him up next time. I then. would say that would be a good idea. i got to jump in here. Oh. i got to jump in. I had a, a, bit of a, a bit of a personal epiphany today. Oh, oh, okay. A bit of a personal oh, is epiphany. It, were you on the toilet? No, I wasn't on the toilet. I was in my office and I just had my... Oh, yeah, so that's the toilet. I just had my third monitor... Installed, because you know more 
monitors means more productive. That's what I keep telling that's the IT guys. That's the theory of carrying lots of clipboards around the office, right? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Such a good idea. Yeah, fuck this that dude guy. needs three monitors. He's got to have lots of work yeah, on. Look at yeah. that guy's got three clipboards. He must be fucking yeah. Actually, just before, we, sorry, just top tip for anyone who works in an office this is a dead set. This is legit top tip here, right? No matter what you do. So if you're going off, like digressing, shall we say, if you're going off to talk to a mate, whatever in the office, bring a piece of paper with you. Have something in your hand. Clipboard, as Money says. Yeah. yeah. Have that something looks, in your hand. Because that's dead set legit. Because the clipboard has multiple bits of paper. Yeah. And you know they're serious because it's, it's, it's got the clipboard holding multiple bits of paper. So it's like, whoa, whoa, that guy's working. Or a folder. A folder full of paper. Yeah. And it's like, don't mess that yep. guy. He's on business. Yeah, Official business. I, I pick up the folder yep. before I head out the door. It does make you seem a bit more official. Yeah. So, so anyway, you know the trick. I had this epiphany. I was in my office. And the group chat was going off. As, as it does, the Gaslands group chat. And there was a discussion about a particular combo. And I'm like, right. And my first instinct with this combo was, that's so broken, it's got to be wrong. And then I went through the rules and I posted up this big argument. I'm like, this is why I think it's wrong. And then I had it pointed out that my argument wasn't necessarily based in logic. And I sort of stepped back and went, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm wrong. The reading of this rules and the way that it all fits together, I'm wrong. But that's when I had the epiphany. I'm like, my brain just can't process the fact that there's this broken option out there. I've got to find a way to prove the people that are breaking things it's, down. It's that difference between rules as written and rules as intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And even then, like, I, I dead set had the rule wrong. But in my brain, I'm like, there's no way that can work like that because that would be broken. Mm. let's try and rationalize a way of rules as intended over the top of rules as written. And I'm like, fuck, I'm just the worst competitive player ever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just house rule it. No, I mean, it's, it's fine. The way, the way it's written in the rules yeah, but, is fine. Uh, and really, I get it. And like, and yeah, it's a retarded thing. No one's going to do it. It's 41 cans for this one trick pony, if you will. But at the same time, it's like my brain's just going, that can't be right. That can't be right. It shouldn't be right. It shouldn't be right. Yeah. But it is. So, you know, it's just crazy. So was that you being hopeful that it couldn't <sighs> possibly be right? I, I'm going to use the word naive. Yeah. I think I was just naive going, nah, they wouldn't have I, done that. I, it's, it's a one-man show, right? Realistically, the yeah. old Gaslands. Yeah. And I don't know how much testing they do with the general community before he puts out those supplements. Yeah. Be interesting to see now that they're getting getting collated into yeah almost the second edition the second edition yeah. oh wow that's a hard good. that's a hardback good idea. hardback memory? osprey, osprey. Book, um with all the expanded rules included in the in the hardback rule book up September yeah I think it was yeah yeah I so you've say. got about what six months to figure out how you're going to stock osprey books for me well done oh, I, I, Dave's I, games I know how to get, you. yeah I, I already got them yeah. I didn't know about that until you literally showed it to me and I was like, oh, right. So, yeah, I'll be chasing that one up as soon as it drops. Yeah, because I'll buy another copy of that book. Yeah, well, we're all going to have to, aren't we? Yeah. 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 It is a pain in the ass flicking through. And that was the other thing with this rules discussion, going through three different PDF documents and the rule book, basically, to figure out well, I how think, the interactions all work together. Well, going off on a tangent a little bit further with this then, uh, Infinity, you guys have... We've had exact conversations. Same, same deal, yeah. You keep releasing more supplements, yeah. new units, new rules, and then it, it just shit starts to fall off the side of the truck. Mm. You know, I guess maybe quite literally in Gaslands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when Batman, I, I'm assuming was maybe from first to second was in a similar situation mm. because they had the Justice League and the uh, Flash and the Arrow, all that sort of jazz released, and I think they might have brought out Magic and. They started getting a bit messy, apparently, and so they've done the second edition and, and uh, streamlined all of that. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. Gasoline's in a similar situation. So tell me this. You played uh, Clint. I did. Yeah. And uh, to, the, to the listeners, he, uh, Clint so is Clint's like, like... So he's like one of the top players in Queensland, the if top, not Australia. He'd be the top <laughs> player in Queensland if, and uh, he'd be up there in Australia's yeah. rankings. Yeah. But he unfortunately had an extra unit on the on the game previously, so they weren't sure what to do with the results, so they just made it a draw, which he'd won. So then it bumped him down to where I and I'd just come off a big win. So are you saying that his rankings is questionable? 
No. You know, we say all the best players no. sometimes find ways to bounce the rules. No, Clint, he's, uh. He's, uh, he's a stand-up guy. Yeah, I know. He's the first I'm one just to just tell you. Yeah. Um, and he knows what he's doing. You Don't can tell. Cast the but, you know, when you man. know you're in the sh- you feel like the, you feel like the little rabbit, the headlights yeah. are on yeah. you, and you're yeah. like, oh, crap, because he's doing stuff, and you're like, oh, crap, he's doing stuff, and I don't know what the frick's going on, but I know he's going to fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit there the whole time, just waiting for it. And he's patient. Yeah. Did he have the plus one to hit item on his arches? No, he had, so- no, he had, he had semen. <laughs> Which that threw me as well because I don't. I've never had to face that stuff as well. See, I'm, I've I'm never like, had semen come at me either. <laughs> no, and I don't want it to ever have it again. <laughs> it was a one-off. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. There's yeah. a t-shirt in there somewhere. So you copped it. You yeah, copped I, it. I copped from it in, yeah, in the face. <laughs> you can never get bored with that. You can oh, never get bored with could that. Could be any worse than getting tea bagged by DT. <laughs> <laughs> that's a toss up that's a that's a that's a would you rather game right there uh, either way you're a loser yeah <laughs> so yeah so to wrap the weekend up I had a good time and got out there nice and early which was a bonus well that was just the Saturday that was just the Saturday and that was kind of the reason why I wanted to not um, have a long day on the, the the Saturday because I had shit to do on the Sunday but there was a bit of an interval between the two tournaments there was, oh, yeah, we did, didn't we? The tomb. Yeah, the we had a tower. The ta- what, what do you call it? Got, it's, I, I, to me, it's just a meat tower. What was it? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's literally called the tomb, which is the tower. There the you go. Yeah. yeah, and it was... Uh, we actually got two towers. And, none, and no one had a heart attack. It was great. So do you want to explain to people exactly what we did? We went out for dinner at a German <laughs> restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, that night. And got a few bevies as well. Yeah, and a tower of meat. <laughs> yeah. At a German restaurant. At a German restaurant. So yeah. shout out to the crew at Der Stemstich. Yeah, that place. Yeah, good stuff. That was good. And yeah. the staff were amazing. Oh, they were brilliant. So good. Yeah. We had this discussion the other night. And, and after you left, as you come over, we played Cowboys. Yeah. Which we'll talk oh, there, about. there's another. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And um, and he's saying to Jerry, oh, it was a great place. But uh, the staff were amazing. And I said, they just ripped on him the whole time. And I then did. when you I left, like it, though. she's like. Do they really pick on Muddy? I'm like, yeah, every time we go anywhere, the, the wait staff, the serving staff just rip on Muddy. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> but what does that mean? I think he's just so non-threatening, buddy. It's just, I just don't get it. Like, And you're approachable and you're amenable and you're, like, you're going to have a laugh with this guy. I have guy. a laugh. I actually find yeah. it amusing. So, mm. yeah. It's not like they're ripping like in some bad way. It's a no, bit no. of jovial fun. Yeah. And I think, well, maybe I do take it pretty well and I go with it. So they... Yeah, keep it up. It's banter, like we've, mate. we've had that at, um, what's the other, uh, the Canberra joint? Um, the Mooseheads. Mooseheads. Yeah. All the with time. The, with the weights just yeah. off there. Anyway. And you mentioned Burwood with Burwood? the Lego hair. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Burwood. All the classy establishments around yeah, Australia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, interesting. Anyway, mm. so then Sunday, Sunday. Should we let Greg tell this story? Yeah, we might as well let Greg tell the story. Well, first of all, first tournament. It's going to be funny when I tell it, but he can go first. Yeah. Hang on. First <laughs> tournament. You've you've run, yeah. So that was the first event that I've run, um, and I think it went okay. Well, it's not just the first uh, event you run; it was the Australia's first. Australia's first. Well, as far as I'm aware, and we're till we till we're corrected. Prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. Australia's first Rumble Slam tournament, and I said that if I got six, I'd be stoked, and I got six, so I was stoked. And there was no issues, no dramas, no weird rule issues. Everyone seemed to get along. There was no. No one threw any dice, although someone might have wanted to. At I, I was very restrained. Yeah, and so we had some winners, we had some losers, and we oh. had some, you know, best painted, best sports, the stuff that I, I kind of dig. So I um, believe best sports off the top of my head went to Lee. Yep. Lee came down and um, what did he did he bring the sh- the ladies of the yeah, night? Yeah, he had Gamora and he yeah. had the, um, the Dark Elf version. Yeah, he had with, Comet. With Comet and Thespian yeah. as his two stars. After he punched Brad's face in, yeah. in the first round, I thought, oh, crap, here we go. And then, mate, Lee, if you're listening, mate, what the hell happened? He just um, he got Jose'd in the second round, and then, then I think he got beat. He got beat by yeah, me by in you, the last Jacob, round. Yeah. And I got to say, talk about Taker beating like a champ. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why he and got that's, best sports. That's, I had to vote for him best sports because yeah. nothing worked for him in our game. Yeah. And I think it's interesting. We've kind of had a bit of a chat since then. Lee was probably the only one outside our usual meta. Rumble group, our yeah. meta. And he sort of come from a very different meta. And he kind of got overwhelmed, I think, by what we do. Just because I'm not saying our lists were better or anything like that. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying yeah. he come at the game with a different strategic approach, which didn't work against the list that he was facing. Yeah. Apart is, from Brad's bit. Which is funny because... You know. I didn't think there'd be much of a meta with with Rumble Slam. If yeah, I'm honest. so what do you mean? So, uh, in what way? Because I'm intrigued about that. Well, he relied very heavily on the Thespian to, and I don't want to get you know too rules heavy on this. Yeah. To and he based a lot of his strategy around the Thespian, but if it didn't work, that was a one trick pony. It was really bad, and then. Left we him were, somewhat exposed. Yep. Yeah. And I think what we do when we play is that we go one at a time. Like we pick a target, that target's out, then the next yeah. target, and we prioritize really well. That's because that's how you used to play um, fantasy games. That's how you play any any real game. You target you're competitive, you, and yeah. you try and get that, that bit off yeah. and yeah. Move, then move on to the next. And I think he was probably more of a holistic approach to yeah, doing okay. damage across the board rather than... Ah, right. Picking, a, picking one juggler. and off you go. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. So, yeah, interesting. Interesting. We, he tow- he towered Brad up. Yeah. Like it was, I was, whoa, okay. And I thought Brad's list would have gone pretty good after seeing what he did in the um, league in that, because he was only in it for at the back end of it. Yeah. But he went from just starting to actually starting to win some games against some quality teams and opponents. So I thought, oh, this could be interesting. Uh, but no, Lee took him off, and, and and he got best sports. So so the losses he took, he took it like a champ, and he's a massive, oh. uh, massive. Uh, I'm... So yeah, and I noticed Lee wearing the. He's obviously a a big wrestling fan because he had the gold dust shirt on. Did you notice? I did. Yeah. He kept referring to Comet as gold dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had the gold oh. dust shirt on, and then he had obviously Comet there as well, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah he gets it. And he had quite a collection of Rumble Slam minis too. That's one way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was surprised because he, just after the tournament, he bought a team. And I, I actually emailed him and said, haven't you? I feel like that might be my fault. I got a feeling. Yeah. Because I think yeah. it might be. Because it, the team he took, he bought was the team I took. That, that you took. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you're playing Gamora, but you don't have an entertainer. Allow me to show you what the entertainer does. Yeah. So I think that's what yeah. that's all about. I'm actually going to go over his... He doesn't know yet. I'm going to drive over to his place tonight and drop it off in his letterbox. So, yeah. Nice. nice. It's nice. not at all stink, um, stalkerish either. Yeah. No, actually, actually, it's, you know what? It's good because you can, there's no traffic. I can just drive, drop off, yeah. letterbox, see you later. Yeah. Yeah. And then they come out, I just email them and say, hey, check your letterbox. And then they're like, oh, fuck, shit, what? So, so he so, got, yeah. he got, Lee got best sports. So, best painted went um, to. Best painted. Drum roll, that went to Slopster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, now that guy is pumping out minis, isn't he? Like a mofo. Yeah. Can I just? I just want to put it out there too. Yep. It was a toss up for me. Yeah. There was a fifty-fifty call on this. Oh, uh, who? Between some Irish squeezer. Yeah, but here's. Yeah. And Jono. Now Jono paints exceptionally well. Yeah, yeah. But someone had a werewolf that was drill worthy. Mick. But that someone that beat I, me by twenty-five points in our first round game. <laughs> I actually thought when I when everyone put the scores in that um, you would get first, and I would just go to whoever was second. I was just because I knew you'd obviously already got the. We'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah. So, but it it came up anyway. So Jono um, picked it up. So congrats, Jono. Well done, Jono. Yeah, yeah, well done, Jono. I can't remember how many. One win. I think you got one win. One win, maybe two. I don't know. Not sure. Do you his bottom table? Yeah. He might have won that last Brad. game versus Brad. He beat Brad. Yeah. Brad went away with... Bubble Boy got three zips. Spooned. Yep. You should have had, I should have made him... Oh, no, I don't want to see that shit. Until Nudie runs He got the wooden the, spoon, didn't he? He got the dice. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. he got some dice. Yeah, no, He the wasn't the only dice. one that got some dice, actually. Yeah. He wasn't. So, my first round game... I'll, I'll jump in here, Greg. Allow me. Let's get this off our chest, All right. We? So, I played Greg, and I was anticipating that I'd have to... Play him sometime during the day. Okay, I knew it was coming. Didn't know what he'd take. 
Okay, so I was intrigued. When he put down the werewolf, I'm like, okay, yep. can deal with the werewolf. When you put down, um, what's his name? Gobba. Oh. Gobba. Yeah. Yeah. That's when Goba. you're like, Gobba. Gobba. Yeah. yeah. I was like, right. Priority number one. <laughs> yes. Now, I, I intentionally bought Lord for grapple attacks because I knew there's a couple of characters with too high def yeah. and too high dex. So you got to choke him out. So that's his job. And I think I executed the plan really well. Up until the point where we added up the points at the end of the game, me assuming it was a, a 450 point draw, and it was um, Greg's 475 to my 450. <laughs> Dirty. It was Dirty. so close. You should have last round checked the cards, see what the points because it's public knowledge. I know, I know. Anyway, uh, the the dice come into it because I had the uh, original starter set. Your dice, dice were horrendous. Were sh- they were shocking, and they were shocking, and all the all the faces had rubbed off and all that sort of stuff. They so. were the worst dice. Like I didn't even order them into the store because yeah. I wouldn't sell them. Because but anyway, not only shit. were they terrible quality, but yeah. they just rolled like past. In fact, all they actually the got them out of the starter box. Yeah, oh, and put they? in the deluxe ones. They've now. got the deluxe really? ones yeah. in there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, 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 they were just that shit. Yeah, they were awful. Yeah. But- Going back to Jesse's dice, like I, I felt, I felt so bad because <laughs> you couldn't put you couldn't put a plan of attack together because every time you did something, you failed like miserably. We've, yeah. we've been there with miserably. Blood Bowl, right? Yeah, yeah. Where you do the the plan and it's like I got you, and then double one. So that's what, in the end. I just went balls out. I'm like, right, well, nothing I'm planning is working. Let's just go straight up the guts. Yep, and yep. that that's how I ended up sort of turning it around. So right the dice, the, the dice rewarded your um, aggressive. Yeah, nature. yeah. The first half of the game, you had, you got literally nothing, literally zip, and then the second half when you when you sort of start turning. I threw caution to the wind, really. Yeah, then like, you actually started stuff happening. Yeah, just you started doing a millsy. Well, that's the other thing too. I rocked up with one reroll. Yeah, and Lee had one reroll. Pretty much everyone else nearly maxing out. Yeah, six plus. Yeah, so. well, Jono had eight, eight, and I had eight. Yeah, yeah. Oh right, so yeah. But see, that's the thing. I, I think an extra wrestler on the on the on the board, board is better, is than, the better re-roll? than the rerolls. Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, like, I we, think, could, we could talk about that. But rerolls, rerolls don't that. count for anything. At well, the end of the game, even if you haven't used them, that's two hundred points you've lost mm-hmm. off your roster. But I use all of them. The game against um, Jose, I used them like yeah. I, I like I, like I guess I had a set game plan, and it gave me the option to reroll the dice when I duffed it to get that game plan off and to a certain extent it worked. Yeah. Well, well s- scientifically, we, we tested it. We took one re-roll versus eight re-rolls and the eight re-roll list won. By 25 points. <laughs> and it wins a win. <laughs> and that's only because my guys are under-costed. All right? I'm going to put it out there. Um, and, but my, like, my list worked after that when Greg actually... Bought me some new dice from Dave's Games. I felt that bad. Thank you very much. Yep. I felt that bad for you. <laughs> but after that, completely turned around and everything I tried to do, my list versus Brad and versus Lee worked exactly as I thought it would. So to farm AP, that's that's what I was doing. So everything was all about getting extra AP for my wrestlers. And when it happens, it's a glorious thing. So you turned Kalanga into Burwood? Pretty much. Yeah. New dice. New dice in the comeback. Comeback kid. Yeah. Comeback kid. You got so close. Yeah. You got second. Um, second by the 25. 25 points. Yeah. And the loss. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hang on. There's one thing I only got this, I think, at the end. Thank you. Um, so we, you weren't going by a win loss draw mechanic, were you? Or were you? Yeah. You yeah. were. Right. Yeah, no. So. And then, and then the points differ- differentiator yeah. was the so tiebreaker. The, the, yeah, tiebreaker. That was just purely for tiebreaking. Yep. Yeah. But you had three wins. Right. So if you lost that last round, it was up for grabs because there were would have, there could have been multiple, and I think there was multiple two win players. Yeah. Okay. So then it would have come to the attrition. Right. Where yes. you would. Your That's why I was relying on Jose. Yeah. To beat you. And Jose round got three. belted. Categorically. Yeah. yeah. Like really badly. Didn't didn't lose a model, Greg? No. Yeah. No, he should have done the pants around the ankles, run around the bar. Yeah, so he, he went from a big win, Jose, 
second round to a big loss in the third. Because he beat Lee he in beat the Lee, second yeah. round. Yeah. Yeah, so our first game, narrowly, like a narrow victory, victory of the narrowest of the victories yeah. the possibly have. can't get much narrower yeah. than the, the lowest with, point differential in the game. And oh. that's with you with... What was the game? Oh, no, we played, what and was I the won one? by 12,500. It, yeah. it was half, 25,000. Because it was a half... A skelly, that's right. JT instead yeah. of throwing him out, tried to do something stupid and threw him into turnbuckle. Threw him into a turnbuckle. Yeah. He lands, knocked out on the thing, and he was worth half points. And it was just a skelly or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Which it's cost been me the closest. The freaking right, yeah. belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, played you. And that was an excellent game. I felt really bad for it. So bought the dice. It was an excellent game though. Like I felt it was one of those games that you lost but you come away from going, yeah, that actually yeah. it's a good start for yeah. the, the the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I played Jono. Yep. Um, and he, I'd never played humans before, so no idea. Well, I don't think he'd really had any games one-on-one. Yeah, okay. I think he texted me afterwards and said that was the first games of one versus one that he'd played. Because we've always been... Well, we just love playing multi multiplayer games. Yeah. So he um, so he won like the initiative. So he... Uh, he sent Zangief. I don't know what the real name's wrestler is, but he sent Zangief. It's Zangief. Zangief. Yeah. Vidimar. Yeah, Vidimar. So straight up the guts, right? Straight into my werewolf to take him on. And he rolled, like, he rolls two golds, I think, in attack. And uh, he duffed, Fluffed he, it. like, all attacks. He just didn't didn't get anything off at all. And then I threw, <laughs> threw Zangief out first, my first turn. And, he, and then it was like, right, that, that was it. Because so that's like, his oh, big piece. And he's it. just, that's, he's up against it, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was closer than that because. And then what I used, I used Gobbo rather than draw um, wrestlers in to attack me. You push the big back. ogre because he only moved in three. I kept pushing him back into the corner, so the the ogre essentially was out of the game the whole time. So we finished our game with the ogre was still alive and are still in the ring. And I think I had two wrestlers left, so I think that was a small win. A small win, yeah. yeah. Yep. So that so worked well. Um, and then against Jose, Jose. Uh, one initiative and straight away attack with gun aka the Hulk that's what he does yep and I duffed his, his attack and then just burnt all his rerolls I was like no don't do it you're you know keep those rerolls you know, no no I want to get this off I'm like you don't need to just leave it and anyway he didn't and um, yeah <laughs> I think that's how he, he just runs at you yeah and just he throws did, he threw his whole ki- team at me he just yeah. throws the kitchen sink but then what I, he put all of the stuff within range and I could just bounce off ropes and I just like I got rid of two uh, goblin grapplers without them being even activated uh, Hulk again I pushed back with same as the ogre just pushed yep, back yeah. into the, the corner so, st- so I could deal with them when I wanted to and then just picked off like you said like our meta just just focused and you pick one blats. piss him off that's, that's what I did with Brad I got rid of experiment before he even activated that experiment's mental no, I can't believe it can be. so yeah. Yeah. you don't let him roll dice it's yeah. that simple mm. yeah. yeah it's crazy good so just for the listeners the the, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, the experiment rolls pretty much three coppers for everything, all stats. And if it doesn't but roll a star, it gets to re-roll the dice. Yeah, so that's crazy good. It can be. Yeah. Yeah, it can It can really... You can still roll blanks on a re-roll though. Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah, but yeah. when you're on three... You on know, that's just everything. Yeah, big yeah. odds. Mm. So I guess, um, going back to what you said, like I, I created the list around Goba, the werewolf, and... Um, Oh, was it Captain? What's the Keel guy called? Keel, Keel Hall. Keel. Yeah. Those three dudes. Who is overcosted? You were brave taking such an overcosted <laughs> miniature. <laughs> by 25,000. Oh, well, I reckon if... 50. I reckon he's overcosted <laughs> by 50. I think he's only worth 275, just quietly. So, so all, three of my, all three of those dudes, those big pieces. Every single game, one of my three, like they did something massive, like they were like standout player or or just did what they had to do. So, uh, worked really well. Really pleased. I do think Goba is still one of the most like powerful pieces. Yeah. I think it's like you should sort of. Nah. But if you don't know, if you don't, I think he's one of those guys that you go to after you've played a few games. I think if you just looked at the cards straight away, you'd be like, ah, oh, whatever. Uh, I but don't know. I think three well, I gold Agi. Yeah, the agility, but he, he doesn't necessarily defense. Yeah, but yeah. He doesn't necessarily have any offensive hitting. Yeah, he's a finesse piece. Yeah, so yeah. You, sometimes you like. Well, I know I would. I would just glance over that. I want something that's gonna uh, gonna hit yeah. you. Yeah. Um, try horn extinction event. Try horn warrior. You know, things yeah. are gonna punch you in the face. Whereas he he is such a good little finesse piece that makes all your other pieces better. 
Yeah. And after I've seen it, you're like, ah, oh, right, yeah, that yeah, is such a good works. piece. Yeah. But instead of that, you, did you throw him out? No. I choked him out. Choked him Ch- out. Y- and yeah. then I threw him out. Yeah, so you got rid of him and he, he got kicked out in Jono's game, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty did sure he got... No, no, he didn't. He stared to we, the very end. In our game, it was him in the corner and then I had my human uh, grappler. That's right. I had Phage and I had Lord of Anarchy boxed him into the corner. You're going nowhere. Yeah. And Lord was just double tapping his grapple. Yeah. Each. And Jose won for Did him. Did you have a little bit of knockdown as well? Yeah, it didn't get off though. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Jose won for him too, but just the dice didn't work for him cause, and then because he burnt his rerolls, couldn't reroll to get him. So people were going at him. So that was good. So I guess that's the, you got to know his weakness, like everything, like all mm. the, the pieces in the game, you got to know the weaknesses and you, you focus on that and that's how you get rid of them. So. Grapple. Grapple, 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 grapple. Or, or, or yeah. anything with knockdown. If you can knock him down, then he's... Yeah, I just saw the worlds got knocked down too. I just saw that on Sunday night when I was putting the cards away. It's like, what? His grapple move gives you knockdown. I'm like, far out. Oh, the werewolf. Know. Yeah, didn't yeah. know that. Didn't know that. So I'm like... Right. You're still worried about his rope attack with throw, aren't you? That's No, no, I don't, never use that once. I just use his attack. Um, <sighs> that is such a good, a good piece. I and know. He's only it's half mental. using it. Or didn't even like... I, I said, One third using it, like, apparently. The amount of times I've moaned about that piece oh, and he's so not good. even using it properly. No. And <sighs> I said to Jake, I'm so glad we played each other at the start because I, I still don't know the rules. Yeah. So, like, it was good though. And he freaking it's like, wins. so how does this work? And it's like, oh, you got to do this. Oh, right, okay. Have we actually said it yet? Congratulations. Oh, yes. thank you, buddy. Yeah, so Greg, Greg, Greg was the overall. Just turned out the gold trophy. Yeah, yeah it's only because I wasn't got playing. got the trophy though. out. It's only because I wasn't playing. <laughs> oh, hang on. Like I said in the group chat, Rodders are unbeaten. Yeah, they are. I think they it's are. ridiculous. They are unbeaten. Yeah. I'm sure it's not going to last too long. No, I think I'm, sure I'm going to write a TT a, a letter about it. Again, it's very impressive given how overcosted <laughs> Keel Hall is. Yeah. <laughs> he still lost, though, so... On the points difference between 20, our two big 25 guys. 25 would have got you a draw, right? Yeah. yeah. So so you needed more than 25. Well, Lord Lord's 300, Q Hall 325. <laughs> he should be 275, just saying. He didn't do much now again. <laughs> <laughs> he held his points. <laughs> nah, no, in all good work, man. Yeah. Good job. And Cheers, did you guys, you guys have a, had a good, t- good time and whatnot? Awesome. Lunch was good, right? Oh, it was so good. The venue's They're really good, right? Venue's great, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. The whole yeah. Although that said, someone in the line before me decided to order the the deluxe jumbo mixed grill. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. Brad. Yeah. Which pushed all our friggin' hamburgers back 45 minutes. Well, it they did take a while. His... And I got stuck behind this old lady that was oh. literally leaning on the counter. And a couple of times, because it, it was me and another guy, we're both looking like this, make sure this thing was actually breathing. <laughs> Give her a nudge. Because... She was deciding something, but we're not sure what. <laughs> well, because it was St. Paddy's Day, it was easy for me. That the uh, the old Guinness pie on special, yeah. so done. Yeah, it's it's a good venue. So I think at this point, don't quote me, but I think there'll be another Rumble event in July. There may be a little PSG something something later. There you the go. Year, okay, too. so we might we'll, we'll Maybe. talk. We'll, we'll talk. Yeah, we, there's negotiations currently underway. Yeah. yeah, I have to say, like in all the tournaments I've ever played, that was their most relaxed. Like I, I you know, I went on the Sunday afternoon when we got back and we got back early, which is another big tick in the box. So we wrapped all, it up quick. Yeah, right? finished up, and that early. was with a big lunch. And that was with like a lunch that took yeah. forever. Yeah, um, and so a late start because we couldn't get in because yeah. the doors weren't open. So to get back yeah. here like early, Avo was always good for the family. So big tick for that. Yeah. But you know, no sore head. I wasn't shattered. I wasn't knackered the next day at work. That's Just, what I was. Well, that's what I was hoping for. Like, yeah, punch the, through the rounds, get through it, and then everyone can go home. And then hopefully their partners are like, "Oh, you're home early." Yeah, exactly. So that yeah. way, when the next event comes up, people, you know, partners won't be giving them grief. They're just like, "Oh yeah, well, last yeah. time you're home. Yeah, yeah, cool. Go for it. Have yeah. fun." Yeah. If my missus asked though. It was eight o'clock by the time we finished. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> Um, big th- um, shout out and thanks to the Warrior Lodge guys for letting us um, basically piggyback on their Infinity event that yep. JT was running. The War Corps. Oh, yep. right. I didn't realize he was running it. Much right appreciated. I'm pretty sure he was the okay. TO. Yep. Pretty sure he was TOing. Yeah, he was playing though as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. yep. anyway, thanks. Yeah, cheers, boys. All right. Anything else? Oh, man, we've like. Well, that wraps up that weekend. That wraps weekend. up yeah. that weekend for you. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to jump in and talk about anything else you've been doing? Because we've got a couple of games. That, well, uh, we'll, we'll talk about Wednesday night 
the the manor at, at Bruce Manor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. When we do the review, but I think yep. uh, the other thing we should mention is we had a game of Pew-pew. Tombstone. We did, which we'll be reviewing. <laughs> We've been saying this for five weeks now. We'll be reviewing. It's going to happen. Yeah. I, I, it just took me a while to actually uh, get the time, basically, to slot in to to get a game of this. And, and you I know think... what we need is you and Greg need to play each other. Yeah, I'll you do. I'll who shoot, won, shoot who won between you two? Hey, who won? All right. I sacrificed yeah, a win look, here's for the a game. cinematic moment. I win, but Jacob let me win. But right. Do, yeah, because so he you could win. Have... So technically you win, Jacob. So no, my, technically my... doesn't because he didn't do it. My outlaw bad guy, <laughs> he needed, he had an action and he needed He could have to, walked off the board. With a walk, leave the board and win the game. Yep. But Doc Holliday was standing there and I think, as if my bad guy outlaw is not going to turn around and try and get one last yeah, shot. We totally. played it theming. Totally. We played it Before. exactly like a Western movie. Yeah. Yeah. He's not just going to ride off in the sunset. He's going to take yeah. that He's shot. He's going to take the shot. And he, he took it. He took it. But Doc Holliday is a <laughs> shotgun surgeon. <laughs> this yeah. guy could, could fucking give you a vasectomy from half a kilometer away <laughs> with his shotgun. He just went, fuck you. <laughs> Boom. Take it off. The ERP models, we just used the, the rules straight out of the rule book yeah. for the ERPs. They were awesome. So broken. So <laughs> really? awesome. Oh, yes. But I've got in, in so you get that. you get So them? we did the math. He's got like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, well, I don't He's know. He's got over 500 in cash yeah. in his list, and yeah. I had well, I played with my 300 list that we yeah. played with the other Oh, night. wow. So I, I had, I had yeah. more points, but then I didn't know... Do you know the rules, Kurt? Kind of balanced out. Yeah, yeah because I, I found out quickly that I, I was pushing up too far. Which allowed Jacob pretty much then, with the way the turns work, to sort of just run past me. Like in our game, where which I'm I didn't like, know, I didn't like, know. all my things yep. straight away. I'm like, oh, I should have saved some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there was that point where you went past. And I'm like, oh, it's my guy. And then you're like, oh no, I'm going again. You're like, no, and, I went, and my head went, oh, crap, yeah. crap, yeah. right. But yeah. we'll uh, we'll go. That's why I had to play it way more uh, in depth. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have our good. But I think I really want to see, having played two games now. I think, yeah, you need to play it again properly. Properly, properly, yeah, yeah. Not hiding. especially with these proper shoddy rules. The proper shoddy rules. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. Because we're rolling d sixes against d sixes instead of d eight versus d six. Ah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, we were yeah. penalising shooting too much. Yep. Anyway, we shouldn't. Not that the herps mattered because yep. he's rolling d twenties with no penalties. What? Man, I was rolling d twenties half the time. Not yeah. playing them. Still Disgusting. Sounds like he'll have his Apaches by then anyway. Ooh. Who knows what I'm getting? Just, I did when I got home. I literally, it's a good I sign. Did, I did what you sign. did. You know, like went home and went straight onto the rumble. Yeah, you know, I did that, and I was like, oh, but I just I can't pick. It's seventh cav. I we'll do a group order. Yeah, at some think, stage. Well, when we do a group order, I'll, I'll I might get two. I think it's the only way I can do it. I uh, love this man. Isn't he great? Yeah. I would spy two factions. Well, you have to, right? Because <laughs> because someone might it, come over. That's right. If you build it, they will come. They will so come. you have to have two yeah. factions. Brad, you're listening. You've got to have two factions so that when someone comes over, would you like to play with these models? Yeah, build it and they will come except campaign. Well, <laughs> I think he picked an infinity campaign, one of the most rules-heavy games going, right? And it Arguably, made. yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he quite listened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Greg, we got any news tonight? Uh, no, actually, no. I, I didn't look at the news. So, nope. save, save Brilliant. Next, so, next we time. should just get straight well, into the review. Oh, got a couple of things. Oh, fans. hang on. Oh, oh. This is sneaky. He's just coming out of the blue with it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hit us with it. Yeah. So, well, first up, I've got an apology to make. Okay. Yep. So, I actually read the War Games Illustrated Magazine. Oh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Here it is. Is this after the editor wrote you the letter back? <laughs> no, no, not quite. <laughs> after right, you were yeah. triggered? But but I, I always... <laughs> okay, so listeners, before you, you criticize something or question something, it's always useful to read it from cover to cover because in not... the editor's note at the front of the magazine, he does say, he does caveat the magazine by saying it's not... Ult- modern combat like it's not ult- was it ultra combat ultra modern ultra modern that's yeah. it that's the phrase I'm looking for it is modern which takes us up to 2000 see this is what happens <sighs> when people don't read things and they just read the front headline without I still, any context I still think my my points would justify to an extent I think so too I think so too 
Because I think it would be easy to make the, if you're not aware of the distinction between modern and ultra modern. Mm. You're going to look at that. Unless they stated what that meant in the article. Well, you know, like it, it's assuming you don't read it. <laughs> I do think. <laughs> assuming though, you just get triggered at the, the, the headline. I, I do think the um, Black Ops still, despite the fact it's got a, look, it's, it's got a, a flashy cover on it. Yeah. Still trying. Yeah. It, it no, I agree. As I said, I've seen Black Ops with yeah. World War Two games. So, yeah. Uh, World War Two games with Black Ops. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so with that apology out of the way, we can can move on. Okay. Also, I had an interesting experience um, over the weekend. A really rewarding experience. Oh. Yeah. So, um, uh, my eldest, he asked to have a friend round on Saturday. Um, and this friend plays Magic the Gathering, a bit card game. But he wanted to come round um, to show him how to play 40k. So I was like, yeah, cool. But like, you need to read the rules because I've got no idea how to play it. So yeah, yeah, no worries. All right. So anyway, he got the rules out and he was reading them a couple nights before. And, and he, I've got uh, underneath my work table, I've got a whole box of White Dwarf magazines that, that have been put away for like, they're you know, covered in dust now for ages. Anyway, he, he started reading them. He started ripping them out and going through all the old magazines. Got the the 40k starter set. I forget what it's called. Um from way back whenever we did the review. Mm. So he broke out all the models and he that's the one he, he showed you tonight that he was painting yeah, yeah. the the a Nurgling sorcerer thing. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. As a, as a sorcerer of some description. Yeah. 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 So um so yeah so he he of his own accord he got this made around. I got the scenery out for him, got the table out for him, set it all up for them and off the one and the the model threw a game of 40k which was really good. And uh, his friend won, which was even better. That's about 70 30. 30. Exactly right. That's exactly what I said to him too. And then they played X-Wing. Um, and they just played the, the basic quick start rules. So no sort of uh, uh, add-ons or whatever. No upgrade cards. No funkiness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, then they played Rumble Slam. I quickly showed them yes. how to play that. Yes. Yeah. So I was sort of up and down stairs most of Saturday showing them stuff and whatnot. And then they played another game of 40K. So... And then how long, how long did this day go for? Oh, uh, he got here at about ten, and he left at about three, four o'clock. That's a good, that's good a solid innings. session. Yeah. They did play, they did play a bit of Xbox, but they played more games than they did Xbox, which yeah. I was super impressed with for a fourteen-year-old. Um, and this other kid, I could you could hear them, you know, playing. He's like, oh, this is a really cool game, like about forty k. It's a really cool game, you know, I love it and all this of stuff. And Phoenix was showing him how to where he could buy the gear and all this of stuff. Um, so he, he went away loving 40k and loving Rumble Slam. There was two favourites, and uh, yeah, he wants to wants to get into it, but just afraid of the the price point. Yeah, which is interesting. He he doesn't think he can afford it. So I said to Phoenix, look, uh, if he's keen, I could probably pick him up some secondhand models from somewhere if if he wanted to, and I could give him get him some models at least, and that way at least make a bit of a start. Yeah. So, um, but it was just a rewarding experience because I started when I was about 13, 14. Um, nobody helped me. Like it was just you know my neighbours and us, and we're just trying to mud, mud through uh, Rogue Trader at the time, which was so you having flashbacks. Yeah, which was a, is a nightmare if you're like a starter gamer. Rogue Trader is not the place you want to start to yeah. play a game. It's, it's not new friendly. <laughs> no, not at all. At all. There's no, no quick start rules or anything. No, um, but to, just to be have the ability to facilitate and look, you know, my son obviously sees all my stuff, but I don't say oh that's you're not like, pushing it no i never never ever push it it's uh, the way i view it is it's up to them to take it all the gears there they're more than welcome to it but it's up to them to have that make that first step so now he's like oh where can we play like is there somewhere local we could meet up and play and yeah he's, he's really can- i said well how about school maybe you could hit school up and see if you could do it at school and stuff so that's uh that's one option hmm. so um it was just a really cool experience as a as a dad it was awesome so he obviously this other little Fella, he's not little. He's as tall. He's, as he's, he? tall, tall, he's oh, oh, almost he's hitting, hitting the roof. The thing. So <laughs> does he live pretty local? Or he must live fairly. Um, local. Yeah, fairly local. Us, like a couple of suburbs yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. uh, but yeah, so like, I'm more than happy for him to come round however often he wants to play. Really. So. Well, you got to have two armies, don't you? Yep. Definitely. I hope he's got some um, some ultramarine blue up there as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's well keen on the. My, my son's now well keen on the Death Guard. All right. Like loves he's just ripping into them and he's starting to paint them up. So that's is cool. actually is that a that's thing so cool. because of the is he, is he is he reading any of the novels or the rule books? Yeah, he is of, actually. Yeah, at the moment, yeah. he's going through the soul. So I was going to throw out all my old forty k novels. I said, oh look, before I throw them out, actually before I give them away, which I'm doing at BrizCon, um, take what you want. 
So uh, he he took all the Space Marine ones and he's gradually working along, along with the Blood Bowl one. Yeah, he's he's made through the Blood Bowl one and Yay. he's now through the Blood the Soul Drinkers Omnibus, which is like this thick. It's like Did you notice his stick. speech slurring while he was reading the Blood Bowl? <laughs> oh, one? Get out! Was it causing brain damage? <laughs> yeah, that's I'm classic. intrigued. I don't know what you're saying. It's a classic he's story. Such a hater. The old dunk. Yeah, it's a brilliant one. Oh, that's, get that's right. modern literature at its finest. Man, we're gonna have to do this reading. Yeah. Should be up for a Nebula Prize, that. It should. It should. It should be yeah, taught at Yeah, because you think, like, Stranger in Strange Land, Starship Troopers, Dune, the Blood Bowl novel. <laughs> like, yeah, they're definitely in the same league, aren't they? Yeah. They should teach it at school. <laughs> yeah. Should, it's about the level that kids at my oh, school could handle. You, yeah. it's, it's not that far away from the bus timetable. Dunk walked from the tavern to the boat. <laughs> then Dunk walked to his cabin. Then Dunk then punched Dunk someone saw in the his face. Friend. <laughs> Well, actually, on top of that, uh, so at English, they had to write a short story, and, and my son wrote it about this um, a space marine sort of altercation or, or battle or whatever. <laughs> it was, it's really, it was, it's so good that my my partner questioned it and said, if you copy that? And he's gone, no, I've wrote it. Cause, and she, she doesn't believe him. It's, <laughs> it's actually hey, really, really good. Send it to J Dub. He could get a job writing for Black Library. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. it could be worse yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. True. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that was it. So uh, no, that's awesome, dude. Hey, that'd, I, I've be often... a, that'd be an intro way to get into your Delta One Zero into the Games Workshop. Yeah. You know what? You Ooh. know what I did today? What? It's because he's into Death Guard. I went there to get some uh, the Death Guard spray paint. So uh, anyway, I can actually airbrush it because I got the colors myself. I just can't bother getting the airbrush out. So you know, modern society just go to j- anyway. The guy there tried to sell me everything. He said, "Oh, you, he said, I actually lied. He said, are you into the hobby? I said, yeah, nah, my son is, but I'm not. This is for my kid, yes. <laughs> just, just I want this conversation. Because you just want to So end. he couldn't be yeah. bothered. So, and then he's like, oh, but, and he's, so he's, because he thinks I'm a noob, yeah. you know, because I'm like dumb. Is he's he, like, is he dribbling on you? Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, like fresh meat. All right, so he's like, hey, well, you got to get him onto this website and got to get him here and you can do this, you can do that. I'm like, Oh, just in my mind, just gone. Just give me the bloody because you can't. So you can't here. say I've been doing this hobby now for like thirty yeah. years now yeah. because you've already told him. Already told him, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now I can't go in there when he's in there because he'll just like, oh, so your son, how's he going along? What was he need blue for? That doesn't really go with Death Guard, does it? Or whatever, like whatever yeah. paint I need. Oh, nightmare. Should have just been honest. Yeah, I should have. You can't go back to that store now. I might, yeah. yeah I might next be. time, you just pick up the paint and say no habla inglés. Yeah. <laughs> Me no habla. That's from a moderns, not just yeah. That seems yeah. keeps them quiet. Uh cool, cool. Yeah, I've often wondered what whether my son like. Okay, this is gonna sound terrible. Don't really want my daughter to get in wargaming. Yeah. I can understand that. I yeah. totally agree. I think that's a really good move. Not a not a huge fan. If she wants to, I'll facilitate. Yep. It's not a door I'm going to be holding open with gusto for her. Yeah. Maybe board games. But I don't think that's a problem anyway. Um, but I often wondered, my son, like, is that, you know, because he's only two. He's only a little tacker. Yeah, yeah. Like, Willy, Willy, won't he? Do I have a, a gaming partner forever? Or is he going to look at that and go, no, I want to go dance with Lily? Or, you know, like. Who knows? You just don't know, do it's you? It's crazy, yeah. Yeah. Video games would be the hard because you, no, you've got quite a few video games too. That they yeah, just we, automatically we, gravitate yeah. to it. I think, well, I think all kids look up to their parents as role models. And again, I haven't forced it, but you know, I've I've played games with them because it's, it's fun. And we play, we try and play family games every week or fortnight. We try to. And that doesn't mean we're all successful. And we always have a laugh. And I guess playing say, X-Wing with them is just a means to connect with them and just show them that here, this is like they love Star Wars, so it's it's an easy sell. So, but after that, it's up to them. Like, so just yeah, intro yeah. it and and show a little bit and and keep it short and simple. And it's just a way to interact with your son. It's a way to spend a, a nice half an hour of the day. Or yeah. kids, in general. yeah, all yeah. kids. Sorry, yeah. not yeah. I know it sounds terrible saying I don't want my daughter to. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally I can one. understand though. <laughs> but you you've got a daughter. You'd understand yeah. where I'm coming. She from. doesn't. She's not interested. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but then neither's my little fella really. Mm. Like they've had a bit of a tinker. They both had a bit of a tinker, but they just gravitate to them. So I, that's cool. Yeah, they might come back. They might come around at some point. Maybe you know? if you brought a trophy home, like the one I'm holding. Well, right you now. can't do that when you're you're not playing in it. Like otherwise, it's true. Because 
That's true. You can't win Imagine your events. That, that's right. Like I cop grief last time because I got the belt in a league I was running. Actually, I'm going to challenge now, what, you. On that. What happens then when I I run an event and then I bring home all the, the no one's going to play in your events because you know that's Muddy's right. just going to win anyway. So yeah, Muddy just wins all the time. So we're just. I'm going to challenge you on that uh, on that belt. Is that is that league still open? No, the league's, the league's done. It's gone, man. No, I think... You missed your window. Because I recall, because I had the belt and I had to relinquish it, I think you said I could challenge at any time. I'll no, tell you what. I don't remember saying that. I think we need to do a grudge match and I think we need to live stream it. A grudge match? Yeah. A three-way? Ru- no. I don't want to get in that. I want to film it. Right. Colour commentary is what I want to do. Oh, he's hot. Ooh. All right. We end up in Bring the video. it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll put it out to the, to the listeners. If you want us to live stream... The Titans versus the Rodders. <laughs> Come on, the Titans! The grudge match, the belt match, <laughs> the rumble in uh, in the jungle. At this time, I'll play you with a full roster. What do you mean by that? I, last time I, we hey, played for the he's going to play you with overcost miniatures. I didn't. I, I, was, I was short on my roster. <laughs> really? Yeah, JT added it up. He's like, dude, you were down like however many points it was. I was like, 25,000. Oh, shit. One re-roll. <laughs> No, I think it was more. I think it was like a whole hey, rest. That's one. enough to ruin your day. <laughs> yeah, I think I missed. Stop it. Your I'm not. Behave yourself. I will hit JT up. He'll tell you. All right. Yeah. All right, Greg. Anything else in your little notepad there? No, no. No, only uh, Batman, the miniature game notes. Well, should we get into the review? Let's do it. Oh, yes. Yeah. You're listening to Power Stance Gaming Podcast. Time for a Power Stance game review. Okay, so uh, tonight we have our long-awaited review of Batman. Batman. Gay. Okay, yeah. So, Batman. Pow. Zap. Nut. That's awesome. Um, Kazoom. Well, money like. This is you. You are the DC guy, as you quite often remind everyone constantly. Uh, look, I, I mean, I like I'm DC, the DC guy, but then yeah. I go to Bruce Manor's place, and I they're, they're fanatics on it. Yeah, they're like, holy crap, you are you like you read everything, Jesus. So I don't want to say I'm a DC. After I witnessed that, I'm like, I I'm just I'm just like a you're a part timer. I'm a weekend guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the weekend DC just, guy. Yeah, yeah I rock up for Saturday, the Saturday, Sundays. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. I go home early on Sunday. Mm. Yeah. So, give us a rundown so, of the game. Okay. Well, First of all, break it down for me. Give me something and I'll throw name. it out there. Oh, sorry. Uh, manufacturer. Name, Batman Miniatures game. Okay, manufacturer. Night Models. What else do Night Models do? Are they only starting The Harry out? Potter. Do you know what? I, I, I got on their Facebook page the other night. How and sexy I was like, did they look? Oh, they're so good. They're so sexy. They're so good. <laughs> and I've even got the friend. I'm like, look, Jerry, look. And she's like, oh, the Weasleys. And I'm like, shut up. I'm not buying it. Yes. Yeah. You can't. No, like it's I good. Because she said, yeah, if you legit buy any more miniatures, I'm taking the kids and going. So. <laughs> You'll have even more money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've had this discussion and about shelves. divorce courts in Australia and what happens to the men's money. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. not a good picture, is it? No, it's not good. But you'll have heaps of shelving space. I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll have so many shelves. I probably have to offload them to Greg. You could keep <laughs> you, you could keep selling the the plastic crack with Carlos at the train station. I could sling sorted. plastic crack full time. See, and that's cash in hand. Cashy, bro. So you, they don't get to see that. It's yeah. under the table, bro. But you know how that's a, it starts like that, and then all of a sudden you find yourself, you know, Empire. in the valley in an alleyway, giving a five dollar hand job. <laughs> So you can buy the next Atelier box. <laughs> this is how it goes. <laughs> that's that's how, that's what happens in neck beard it's, life, it's is a, it? It's Word. A, <laughs> it's a tragic decline of the hobby. You know, you can, it's affected so many. Oh man, there's so many neck beard yeah. brothers. All those neck beards are, are counselling. <laughs> oh, I had to jerk off six guys <laughs> to get my Prussians. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, what are we talking about? Batman. Uh, the Harry there? Potter. Yeah. So Harry there's po- not not a starter set as such, is there? It's not like you can go and buy off a shelf box uh, like with two factions and the rule book per se. Shooting from the hip, I'm gonna say no. The closest you're gonna get are the bat boxes. Alright, can we can we parentheses here? So little brackets. Yeah. What about the Suicide Squad box? That that was a starter box, wasn't it? Nah, but that's still one 
team. Right. The Suicide Squad's one team. Okay. Yeah. I guess you could play the, the models against each other, but then you could do that with, well, anything. Anything. Yeah. yeah. But is that, so, was that even, is that even still current? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. The, the Suicide Squad is, I don't, I can't remember if that actual box set, I know the one you're referring to, had the, the terrain and whatnot. Yeah. And yeah. The dudes That's with it. the cosplay masks. Yeah. And stuff. I, I don't know about that particular set, but. The Suicide Squad is in it. We might come back to that later on when we're talking. Yep. So, we were talking about this before the cast date released. No freaking idea. Late 2017 for the current edition. There you go. Second edition. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're at second edition at the moment. Um, Like we said earlier at the start of the podcast, I'm assuming it got a bit heavy. And with the releases, I believe Arrow and The Flash introduced some new concepts. And there was some doubling up of... um, rules and so they've streamlined it and, and listening to uh uh bruce and um big mike who's over in the u.s at yep, the moment yep, he's having a good time uh i believe i hope he's making notes for our live play RPG yeah, session. i i believe it was getting a bit hard juggling between the books trying to find all the right. different rules and whatnot um which any any rule system eventually will do when you have a lot of releases and so they've brought out second edition which Kick started with the uh, off with the resins where they went from metal to resins. Actual right. Kickstarter or no, not a Kickstarter, Kickstarter, but like as in yep. when they dropped the resins, the second edition was coming with it. Night models don't have a great track record with Kickstarters. Oh, okay. Oh, I was actually going to bring up uh, Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Harry Potter was fine. It's 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 available. It was fine for if you lived in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, but you've had some experience with the metal models. Yeah, they were shocking. Greg well, so did you? Yeah, yeah. same. My they were we awful. Shot? I bought the League of Shadows. It must have been around twenty fifteen. Yeah. Not happy. I don't think I was even. We were in our new house yet. So yeah, I because I remember having them in my did you old play, house. Did you play with? Against um, Big no. Mike and what I saw them playing a game at QNK one time, and I'm like, this looks fun. Yep. And I saw the models, and I'm like, oh, they look great. So you went home, did the Rumble so Slam, I've... jumped on the website, yeah. bought the models, they Got turned models. up, and you went, fuck, assembling this shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was shocking. They were just disgustingly bad. And I know it's been said before, the, the head on the <laughs> Liam Neeson model... It's just, it's so out of proportion. It's like, oh, it's, really it's shocking. Yeah. I think that they, I'm almost certain that I can picture the conversation in the offices. The sculptor's like, oh, here's Ra's al Ghul. And they're like, doesn't quite look like Liam Neeson. Just make his head just a touch bigger. And then the next day, oh, just a touch bigger. Oh, yeah. And then the next day, it's still not quite Liam Neeson-y. I mean, Liam Neeson's what? He's a middle-aged white dude with brown hair. Like, he's not necessarily distinctive. Yeah, that's right. So, well, it depends on what part of the world. To maybe someone or another, they would go, "Oh, that looks." Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But and anyway, so yep. the the result so we ended of up with this a balloon is, head. Yeah, oh. and, head. and the quote we got the other night was, "It looks like giant head mode from Goldeneye back in the day." <laughs> right. Oh was, shit! Josh said that. Yeah. I was, that was a belter. Like, yeah. He nailed it with that. Yeah. Jesus, it's pretty shocking. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've moved on. Apparently, from, I think from uh, metal, one thing so. that, that one thing that annoyed me was that. Uh, so I bought them for the kids, actually, the, the night model Yeah, you were pissed. And um, because at that stage, the paint jobs were phenomenal. And the, the models looked so Good. cool and sexy. Yeah. And the paint jobs were awesome. So to so get them and then break out the blister and then to try and assemble it. Yeah. And then to look at it and go, I mean, give it to the kids to paint. So I was like, thank God for that. Because it would it would wreck my head because the detail was even lost in the lead. But I think that the issue was, I reckon they must have run those molds until yeah. there's nothing yeah. left yeah. in them. Yeah. Like, because exactly the right. detail on, even my ninjas, and they're not heavy on detail. They're, they're just robes, basically. Yeah. And it's shocking. Like, to, to get, so to get from that paint job to even moderately like that paint job, Good luck. Like you'd have to be an incredible. So do you reckon painter. you got maybe the back end where they'll pretty much knew that they were going resin anyway, Possibly. and they were like just fucking Possibly. just get them out and we'll yeah. we're going resin. So. I got mine two years ago, I think. Probably been about two years ago. Yeah, so. I reckon I got mine four years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you don't. But then you don't know when it was like when it was actually made. As, yeah. True. As opposed yeah. To it when could you, be sat in the yeah. warehouse for a bit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Pissed at the models, the me- the original metals. Absolutely pissed at them. Mm. Once I assembled them and painted them, I painted two. 
And I was like, yeah, these are okay. But then they just sat on the shelf because no one was playing the game. Yeah. You know, Magpie Syndrome kicked in by then and everyone else was on Infinity. Was the, what? You know, I, that was the thing everyone sort of jumped to at that time mm, in mm. history. And yep. yeah, it was interesting. So, hmm. Um, but yeah, so to today, present day. Well, now we've got the resin. Bit of a different story, yeah. Yeah, completely different. I was... I had a, a miss... Well, hang on. Should we just jump into the aesthetics of the Oh, game? okay. The aesthetics. Well, it's freaking Batman. What do you expect? <laughs> Dark fucking streets of Gotham. Well, you hit the nail on the head. The resin now. So, it's we, resin. a big grab by the metals. And then our resin. Mm. Yeah, resins, uh, which was I was trying to bring. Uh, the resins have been... Uh, well, I love resin anyway. Um, so, I'm a little biased. So, you just take that into account when I give my review. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a miss, um, an arm missing in one of mine. I don't know how common that is, but I had one. But I just, just chucked some. I, and I had a spare, an arm lying around. I just chucked it in. It's fine. Whatever. Is it a one to seventy two Prussian flag? Or no, it was like actually a centurion, a twenty eight mil, twenty five mil centurions arm that I just chopped the hand off and shoved it in there. Because all it's just, it's literally, literally from what the elbow to the rifle. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So you can't, you can't really tell shit. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I I I got the Bane Venom Overdrive, and so they're the ones I've put together recently and just painted, and yeah, no dramas. I, but you know, I love resin, so yep. yep. The the models are they're sick, pretty good. It it reminds me of Malifaux. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the models. Hi. Uh, scale resin, scale. Mm. Okay. Yeah, they're that it's heroic. Just when you get them, and, and it's coming. They, unless you're getting a single pack, they're generally coming like even in, as a, as a as a group. Yeah, you know, there's your team, and so it's just it's, it's this game. I think will come up a few times. It's very feels Malifaux-ish. Well, I must admit, I do like that bat box element to it. I think that's so cool. That's well, that comes so up. Floats the, my boat. the bat boxes come. Uh, I don't quite know how many there are. I think maybe five, five or six, something like that. Um, it comes with a whole crew. I think I think it's like three hundred and fifty points or something like that. Um, but it also comes with like a quick start guide on how to play, and then it comes with a whole bunch of cards, um, equipment cards, and generally some like a special objective markers as well, specific to that bat box. Yeah. So the Bane one, for example, has like a little teddy bear. Which, yeah, well, yeah, where I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Um, I'm thinking the Joker might have um, little canisters, you yeah, know, like okay. in the movies where the yeah. gas comes out. I think Smilex. From, yeah, yeah, don't quote me on it, but I think they're like canisters and things like that. Yeah. One thing again, I, I, I love about this, and look, it's been with Night Mall's been doing it for donkeys. Is the different variants of. Um, of superhero, so you know you've got multiple variants of Batman, Batman, yeah. Joker, yep, uh, to name a couple, Penguin, uh, Robin, um, Penguin, yep, yeah. So I'm just looking at the different Batmans. I was looking at the different Jokers the other day. They've even got uh, uh Heath Ledger's Joker, yep, yeah. So Dark like, Knight, and yeah. they got different rules for each Joker as well, which is like as a phenomenal. Yeah, so effort. you can you can really pick um, the character that you want from whatever series you kind of want. Like some will be listed as comic. Then one might be like movie, you know, like it might be off a movie or a particularly animated series. It'll have it listed. So if there's a particular one that you uh, prefer, you can basically purchase that one as required. Yeah, yeah. including the Batman animated series. There's a Batman is... animated <laughs> series. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of different Batgirls. Yeah, yeah, it, it's quite cool. But then it's it also adds then different variants to the the rules. So you can have. You don't have to necessarily have heaps of different named characters. You can have multiple different rules for the same characters. So it's almost, um, yeah, it's quite cool. Nice. Mm. So um, on that, in the characters, how do you, how are stats done? Like, how does all that work? Okay, so the stats. All right, so you've got a car, all the, everything's done on cards. So you have your... Mm -hmm. We would call them model cards. Scamish okay. game with model cards. Yeah, the yeah. usual fancy that. fantasy fancy that. type thing. Um, and on, on that, it's got literally um, all the stats required, willpower, your defense, um, 
tax stats and all that sort of stuff. And then what you're basically doing is you cutting to the short is you're basically using your willpower to allocate uh, dot, uh, action points essentially into each of these categories. And so you have to forecast what you're going to do. Well, we might. Do you want to yep, wrap yep. up aesthetics before we do that? Okay, let's do it. Cards. How do you rate them? Uh, I like them, but I'm going to have a negative. There is a negative. What is it? Uh, my negative is that the text is way too small, but I understand why. Um, the cards are... It's great having small cards, but by having small cards, that means if you've got a lot of text, the text is going to be small. Mm. And so you get to someone like... And, and for most of the guys, there's not a lot of rule. There's not a lot. Like They're just little uh, second-rate characters, right? Basically following along your superhero, right? But their text is the same size as the, su- as the big superheroes because they will obviously want to keep everything standardized. But you'll get to someone like, say, a Bane... And he, a whole back of his card is special rules. And the text is so small. Um, you're trying to play late at night and you're starting to get a bit tired or not. It is really hard. I was finding it quite frustrating trying to really look at these cards to see the special rules. Yeah. So anyone out there uh, designing cards for any games, I would, I would think about that. Yep. As to what you're going to put on the card or what size the card is going to be. B. Funny you should say that. Yeah. Interesting. The front, yeah. the front of the card, uh, where the basic stats are and everything else, and the equipment, no dramas. That that shit rocks. But it's when you flip to that other side that I was just like, oh, it's it's the text is too small. All right. But I might maybe I'm getting old. Yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah. No, that I'm getting old too. Not the yeah the eye the eye sight. Yeah. You know, starting to go. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So minis big tick. Minis to me are a tick because. Is, there's not like a miniature where you don't know what it is mm-hmm. as well. They are amazingly posed as well. Yeah. You know, they're like the prisoner set, for example, I think looks amazing. The Blackgate prisoners? Yeah. And yeah. they made every prisoner unique. Yep. And, and really its own, indiv- like you would have a pleasure in painting them rather than just as a henchman, three colors off you go. Like to mm. me, I'll just go, oh, they're, they're so well done. I think, Do you the, know, yeah. Um, I'm going to actually disagree. I think there's not a lot of variety in their poses. Well, okay. And I get there's only yeah. so many ways that a dude can stand. Like, yeah. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah. I find, like, your henchmen all tend to be in very similar poses. Right. It's okay. almost like they've got a template. This is the front-on guy. This is the moving-forward guy. This is the kneeling guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's, there's yeah. It, And just from my cursory glance, happy to be proved wrong. And also, a lot of the heroes in that are in that classic contraposto one foot forward, the shoulders turned, doing, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. classic mm. hero pose. And obviously for a reason. Yep. But I think, you know, you've got opportunities for a lot of characters. I mean, there are standouts, of course. Heath Ledger's Joker doing that classic pose where Shoot he's yeah, shuffling along. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. And, you know, like things like that. But I I sort of, from my observation, and that was just a casual glance, really, at the catalogue was like, mm, I'm seeing a lot of the same pose pop well, up I'm, a little bit. Well, I'm. So when I give my review later, I'm obviously biased. That's fine. You're allowed to be. Yeah. yeah. Because, I, you know, that, that's it's your opinion. Not, yeah. I, I, I really, I dig it. And the good thing about this too is you do not need a lot of models. So to Greg's point, when you get that, that henchman, you can literally take your time and paint that mm. with as much gusto as you want because you're probably only going to have about five or six guys on the, on the pitch anyway. So mm. you really mm. can put that time in. Yeah, uh, the quality of the minis there. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm just thinking across the range. Actually, I'll, I'll say and one maybe thing as with, more stuff gets updated, I, they'll address that a little bit more. If there's one other thing I would fix, because actually this was a bugbear of mine. I don't like slot bases, slotter bases. Really? Yep, I've never liked them. I'd rather glue it to the the feet. Yep. To the base. Yep. So there's no funkiness with the slotter base yep. popping up a little or gaps and whatnot. So for me, that's actually a negative. Yeah, like, must that was it, something yeah. I was just like, oh. And even the objective markers, if you buy the the night model ones, same deal. It's it's slaughter base, and to me, that's an old way of doing it. I just I'm, yeah, I've never been a fan of scenic bases. Well, either. most of the bases are just your cobblestone. Yeah, that, that's all it is. So you, that's easy to fix, or you can go buy your own. That's that's really simple. But there's there's not a lot there's not a lot of craziness on the bases themselves. So, um, some of the models like. 
the Bain Overdrive one, it's part of the model, yeah. but it's not actually part of the base itself. Like, yeah, Nissa with her temple roof yeah, on the ground. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, the ones that I've seen so far generally are just, just um, yeah, yeah, simple bases. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, right. So aesthetics. We want to move into gameplay, and you can go back to the cards, and probably a really key element of gameplay. Well, that's actually one of the things I found. Ref- like, I actually quite enjoyed it, but it's. I, I was thinking of this earlier because it, it the game does it can take a while, especially if you. Like, I'm only just starting out, so it takes a while. But the allocation of these action points, how you do that, can actually... It does slow it down somewhat. But I enjoyed it. Does that make... I don't know if that actually makes any well, sense. Well, explain, explain how it works. So the okay, so like I was saying before, you basically have willpower. And that's... You use that to basically allocate action points into each category. And they add up to the willpower. So the categories so you've are only, uh, move, attack, defend, special, and... Uh, is there something else? No, uh, it sounds about, about it. I think that's about it. Yeah, they're, they're the important ones. If, if we're missing one, it's not that important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just rules and stuff. Just rules and stuff, yeah. Um, but also the willpower varies between, I'm guessing, one and nine, I'd imagine. I think... Going off the guys that I've seen, I think the highest I've seen was, I think eight or nine was Bane. But then I, I haven't seen all the other characters, obviously. I'm yeah. only three games in, um, and I've only just started using my Bane. I've been using Josh Bruce's gear, um, and but he's been nice and just let me use Bane. He's Bane, different, different variants of Bane, um, and I'm pretty sure he's, from, off the top of my head, he's an eight. So that basically means I've got eight pips. Yep. to allocate into these categories. But within those categories, depending on who they are, each of those have a, a maximum amount that you can put into those areas as well. So like, well, just for example, don't quote me on this, but it, just as an example, um, Bane might be willpower eight or nine, right? His attack stat might be six. So that means I can only put six of those willpowers into that area and that's it. It's capped out. I can't put, I can't put the full eight in. And that's how those allocations. Interestingly, um, movement, endurance was the other one. Endurance. endurance, yeah. But you don't. But you don't put points. There's some of the stats there. You're, you're not obviously putting willpowers into. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like interestingly, uh, movement is automatic all, all the time. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, well, movement, it, it is. But if you want to yeah, increase your move, mm. you you need you to put it. you need to use that some of those points to put it in there. So an example that we had in our game was that we had a um I forget his name. He was a he was a prisoner. Yeah, he had two okay. knives and oh, okay. he had yeah, a yeah. back claw. Yep. So to use oh, the back claw yes. he that had was a, to, you had to use a movement and a special from use memory. A pip from movement and yep. use a pip from special. But that got him an extra eight inches in any direction. Yeah. Which is huge. Well eight yeah. inches anytime is massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> We're just going by hearsay around here. But interestingly, so what you do, so going back to the gameplay element, uh, so at the very start of the game, very start of the turn, you go through your various uh, troops, models, you allocate what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and this is before you know initiative from memory, before you know who goes first. Can't remember. No. You, so you, you already know who's going you first. You draw the token yeah. out. Okay, so this is another, this, the bolt action guys would be probably familiar with this. Yeah. It's that blind sort of um, initiative yeah. thing. Yeah. So, so it's not blind order, it's blind initiative. Yeah, so each each turn you're basically putting like we'll say marbles or whatever in yeah. or dice, whatever, and you pull it out to see who gets to activate first. And then it goes from order. You go, I go. Yeah. yeah. Per model yep. activation. You can't there are yep. ways to steal the turn, like to to double goes and, and whatnot. Yeah. Some of the different special rules and whatnot. But that's basically the way it goes. But so you, like the other night we played, um, I think I got uh, four of the five at first because my dice just, I had an it's extra gross. one in, I had an extra one in there it's because so of my gross. crew. And I, I literally got all four in a row. Yeah. So I got the first jump each turn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with one, what, with one model. 
So you, you go with whoever and yep. then and then we get a chance to And activate. the person that has the initiative is the first person who has to then allocate these these amounts to their action points and then their opponent can then look at them and then and work out theirs from that. So that's what I mean. If you if you if you're playing like really serious gaming, I suppose, then I would probably put mine out, and then my your opponent would probably wait and see what I'm putting out, and then they would do theirs. So that that can be time consuming, um, especially if you don't know what you're doing. We talked about that. I can't yeah. imagine that happening. Um, I can't because you, oh, you've got I a can. preset plan. No? I can totally see the purpose. No, I, I, second, I, yep. Just stand over your shoulder. Oh, you putting that there, that there, that there. Right. So he's going to do that. He's going to do that. Yep. I'm going to set my stuff up to count. It's yeah. to, it's that's totally what it's for. It's good that it's open. It's not in any way hidden. It's no, good it's that not it's, hidden. Yep. It's interesting. Yep. Hmm. A hidden mechanic could be interesting though. I yeah. don't know how you do it, but yeah. it could be fun. Well, the, we, there is You've some... You've had a way to secretly place orders on the table for your men. There was some hidden stuff going on that where we both rolled up. Uh, oh, the hidden hidden troops. Hidden, de- hidden deployments excellent. and whatnot. Yeah, you might just want to run through that because I thought that was brilliant. Well, that was the first time I'd seen it. So, uh, but basically, we deployed everything, and then we had both had some hidden guys, and then we had to basically, I think, from memory, roll off to see who would put theirs down first. Yeah. And I think you had someone that went an extra four inches or eight inches outside deployment. the deployment. That was our special strategic. And I had a stealth guy that basically just get deployed outside the deployment zone as well. So there are ways to to sort of get a bit funky with the actual deployments as well. Yeah, and you put where'd you put yours? Uh yeah, I'm trying to think. Was that the guy on the left? Well, up the, the ninja guts guy in the middle. Where'd you? Oh no, because I had two. Sorry, I had uh, a sniper guy. Yep. And then I had a, a a ninja sort of guy. Now, where would you want to put it? Where would you want to put an ace sniper? Do you think? Yeah, Listeners, where up would nice, you want to put it? Up nice and high. Yeah, up nice and high, high. Yeah, yeah as high as you can go. Yeah, as high as you can go in yeah. the middle of the freaking board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> You're listening to Power Stance Gaming Podcast. And now, this. So, uh, probably another key gameplay element that we re- need to talk about is line of sight and how that works. Because I think it's it's one of the standout things in the game. So, Gotham is very dark. And so, that's what actually limits how far you can see. It's actually... We plan at night time. It's always dark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then we what you do in the deployment is you're actually putting objectives out in lamp posts and sewers. And this is the this is how you get around the board a bit quicker. And I know I'm kinda of jumping around a bit, but the sewers let you move through them. You can get from one end of the board to the other. You can't move out of it, but you just go in the sewer and you pop out the other end and you just kind of stand there. Like what I did with Bain. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that I went from the one end of the board to the other end of the board in one go. The lampposts throw light out. I think it's a four inch bubble around the um the lamppost. Yeah, for an eight inch diameter circle. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the weapons have got uh ranges, which don't quote me on the ranges, because I'm not that familiar with all the different weapon ranges. But if if you're next to a lamppost and the weapon is with range, you'll be able to shoot them. But otherwise, you are limited by, I think, maybe 12 inches or yeah, something. 12 inches, yeah, 12 inches. Because of the dark. Yeah. So the... Unless the lamp- you're running League of Assassins, yeah. ninjas have stealth, which means eight inches to yeah. see them. Yeah, that's what my other ninja guy had as well. Yeah. So yeah. the lampposts... I read my cards when I got home. <laughs> the the lampposts can be really um, another tactical sort of thing. Because- Hence why we stuck a lamppost on top of the... Uh, the uh, towering piece of scenery in the middle of the board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I just love the concept that everything is out of line of sight, essentially, apart from those light pools around the board. Yeah. And if you're in a light pool, then you're in danger. Yeah. Otherwise, you can kind of move around quite freely unless, obviously, you're within that 12 inches. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it, it's very thematic. It's like getting a rule to work within the theme of Gotham. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's probably why I like it so much. It seems super thematic for, yeah. for the Plus game. Sirs don't. The sirs are, are, yeah. Just, uh, just blew my mind. The sirs. It's a great concept that you can li- and you plonk them down and it's you want because you're literally putting them down. It's six, isn't it? Six, three apiece. I think it's three apiece. A piece. So that lets you go where you think you might need to go. So you put you're putting them where you think you might need to go. Yeah. So if you've got your big bad brawler and you want to get him up the up the back end of the board as quick as possible, where you think the enemy's going to be, that's you're using the sewers. And that, but that also is an interesting point because the last thing you deploy is objectives, right? Yeah. Which is another really interesting gameplay twist. You're not putting objectives down and then planning your deployment around the objectives. You're planning your objectives around not only your deployment, but the deployment of lampposts, the deployment of sewers, and your opponent's deployment. And even the objectives themselves are different. It's not like a lot of games where that's an objective that's worth one, that's an objective that's worth, you know, they're, they're yeah. the same, right? Or maybe the one in the middle of the board's worth three and everything else is worth one. Each different type of objective has different ways it needs to be deployed, ways that it's interacted with, and different points that it awards. Yeah. So there's there's it lots of layers a to massive layer of complexity onto the game. It it really does. It's and that's huge. one of the parts that I still haven't and I, quite... like I went back and read the rule book after our game and yep. I'm like I'm I'm a rules guy. Yep. And I need to see that played to understand it. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the parts the objectives is one of the ones I'm still trying to figure out which is the best way to do that with my particular crew. Um, because this this game, while I I'm gonna I'll, I'll just say it now, I, while it feels like Malifaux Light, there's enough complexity and enough. This has got enough layers of an onion that I actually feel like this could be my. We were saying the other night, this could be my Infinity. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Now this yeah. is not as complex as complex as I think as I think Infinity is. I don't think you need to be on top of it as much as that, and I don't think there's as many gotcha moments in this as say a Malifaux. But this has got enough of those elements of of Infinity and Malifaux in it, right? As in, there's enough teeth to it, right? There's enough chunkiness to it that I'm happy to play that as a bit of a... Uh, as an, as, as a, a hard game. Yeah. yeah. As an outside observer, I think anyone calling this Malifaux light is yep. kidding themselves. Yeah. And I, like I, I see their arguments, yep. but to say, and this is the one that, that got thrown at me the other night, uh, your special rules only affect your guys. As opposed to Malifaux, where they affect other people, and I'm like, no, well, I think I think when I when I say Malifaux light, I think because Malifaux has a lot of other things going on as well. So it ha- not only does it have a lot of a lot of rules and a lot of interactions, and and it can have those gotcha moments, right? But it also has the 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 tactics of the cards. How you whereas mm. with Batman, you're rolling dice. But it you just have simplifies the of Batman of allocating your dice. So you're replacing one, one element with another. It's not like yeah. there's, there's less of it. I, th- I mm. feel that that's an easier system for my head to get around than with Malifaux with the extra layer of cards and the lots of different scenarios. You know, from memory, Malifaux. You know, you there's a primary and then there's all these secondaries that we're trying to choose out of the book and, yeah, and whatnot again, as well. You're splitting hairs with the I know, range but, of objectives because in even, Batman. Even Batman has that as well yeah because you literally i think from memory you have to add up to three objective points or something and they're different St- point costs. strategy costed. points strategy points yeah. or whatever and, and that's and before and objectives what, what was that yeah. what we did oh, sorry start? yeah Hang strategies yeah. was sorry, that yeah. what we did at the start with the patrol yeah, yeah. and, and the, the, our extra uh, yep. deployment yep. deployment yeah, yeah. so yeah. some are worth three points so you might only get one that's th- that, that's your one yeah but you might choose three but you one ch- we chose it we didn't rule it up, but they've yeah, got a, it, yeah. and they've got a particular order yeah. as to when they get revealed. So this, why, is, this is all pre-game. Out it's all pre-game. Out of three, it yeah, gets revealed in one yeah. of the three pre-game. This phases. Is, it's it's a super complex game. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's why it blew my mind. That's why the next day I had to write a whole page of notes. Yeah, yeah. just get out of, out of my brain. Like, yeah. like, and that's what I'm getting at. Like I feel like this this is my this is my hard. Hardcore. Right, hardcore skirmish yeah. game, right? Yeah. yeah. Whereas, you know, you guys had your Infinity, but I don't get the brain strain of from this that I did with Malifaux. I don't know what if it's just because it, it, it's going to the dice mechanic rather than the cards. It just seems to make it just a little bit simpler. I seem to have a better grasp of what's going on than in Malifaux where 
you, I felt like sometimes it's like, ha, I've got this. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that might have been because I hadn't played enough Malifaux too. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If you, and again, we had this discussion too. You, you still need, if you want to play this game competitively, you need God to keep forbid, up. You need to know not only what your guys do, but you need what to your know the other crew. guys do too. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You know, it's the same as Infinity. It's yep. the same as Fantasy. Any game you want to take yep. seriously and play competitively, yep. you have that obligation on yourself to know what each model in the game does. This is not a... And the I, interactions. When I say Malifaux Light, I am not saying this is a light game. Mm. I'm saying it, it just feels a little lighter than Malifaux. That's all it means. Yep. This, mm. is, this is a complex game. I would say though, and I said this when we were playing, it felt... It felt very Batman. It felt like you're playing in Gotham. And it almost felt RPG to a certain extent. Like you were telling a story and you were acting out a sequence in a comic book. It, I guess it, it writes it itself. Yeah. Because of the theme straight away. You, and you're, you're obviously playing with Batman miniatures. You're playing on the streets of Gotham. You've, we've all seen the movies. We've all grown up watching the cartoons. It's already written itself for you. Yeah. There's no work really required other than making sure it feels thematic, stays within that theme. Yeah. I don't think it necessarily creates an, any more of a narrative than any other game does, but it's, I think we're so versed in the narrative already that, that it comes naturally it to mind. It sells itself. It's like when I play the Fallout. I see, I see the, the, the minis on the board plan out scenes from the game. And it, and it just clicks straight away from me. That's because so, it has you have that reference to that that yeah, genre, that yeah. theme. But I think, but I think with the the way they've done the uh, the action points on the cards and the fact um, some of the key, not so much the keywords, but the way they got the sewers, the lighting system, the objectives, the fact that when we killed Bane, we got extra points. <sighs> Like the fact he killed, basically he killed anybody. When we killed Bane. Yeah. He didn't kill Bane. Did we kill Bane? Yeah, we killed Bane. Oh, we well, come on. totally killed Bane. Well, come we on. broke the Bane. 70-30, 70-30. Well, come on to that in a minute. Let's but see the how fact the scores that go. Even the, um, even the henchmen, for example, um, you score victory points for them. Yep. So it's not, it's just not like your chumps are actually worth something in the game. This is so You don't want to yeah. throw away a chump because it's actually worth victory points. And they all do something. Yeah. Yep. Okay, one, uh, uh, they all have I'll a, bring up the Infinity, right? Because yep. we've already brought up Infinity once already, only one, at least once. Um, everyone's got a role. They're all doing something. So I yeah. gravitate to that. It's there's, not just, there's not enough models on the board to have passengers. Yeah, there's no cheerleaders. Yeah. Well, in Infinity, you're looking at it's a different game in that you can have up to 20 models, whereas I can't nah. imagine Batman having nah. 20. I, you, I reckon you're probably at best six Six, seven models. Well, I think not, nine was mentioned. Was I'm it? Sure, nine was was mentioned. That must we be had a lot seven of on the yeah, board. Yeah, we had seven. Yeah. So, yeah, in our intro game. Oh, but you had Grundy though. That's a big. So yeah, you, you probably could get close to ten. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. talk about models and rules? Models and rules. All right. I think there's something really interesting that come up when Ooh. we're talking about this. When you got the bat box, Venom Overdrive. Yep. And you're like, there are just models in there. I wouldn't take. Yeah. Because they're not effective. No, they weren't effective. And I think that but is interesting. But am I not... It's the first game I played with them. Yeah. Now, the first time you take White Lions, maybe you didn't use them properly. Yeah. And then you play them a couple more times and go, wait up, no, these are really fucck good. It's a combo you're missing. Yeah. yeah. So the guy with the, the ninja sword, I went home and I thought about it. Maybe his job's not chop-chopping. At strength five. Maybe yeah. that's not. Or maybe there's an item that I haven't found that helps it get that down. Or maybe I needed to give him a venom dose mm. just before he goes in. So there's, I could have used some equipment to boost that to make him more effective for what the role that I was trying to use him in. Yeah. Maybe he just sneaks around with the with his zipping around just to get the objectives. Yeah. So yeah. that that's on me. You're not concerned the sni- that the snipers. There's the auto one. includes and there's just don't takes. Um, because we looked at the models that we were using. Yeah. And there was models that were clearly way better value for their points cost. Okay. Yeah, others. Josh did point out that that was like, it was his preset top tier crew. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, he, lo- yeah, he said Grundy's pretty, yeah. Well, Grundy was just filthy. Like He's we'll, we'll put Grundy to the side because Grundy's like I fucking killed him. Grundy's the gober of 
I killed him. He's the python. He, he's the werewolf. It cost he's me the, the game. Werewolf. Yeah. It cost me the game to kill him, but I did it. Yeah. That was all I wanted to do for that whole game. Because last Grundy game, killed Ben. He did, but then I killed Grundy. So that's yeah. all I cared about. And the game prior to that, all I wanted to do was kill the penguin. <laughs> and I killed the penguin. That, that's how my head works. Actually, on I'm that, writing those movies. You know what I mean? Interestingly, just when you mentioned killed. So the weapons in, them, in themselves have, have got two damage, at least two damage factors. So one can knock you out. So like say a baseball bat, for example, it would do knockout damage. Whereas a rifle straight off the bat causes blood damage. Yeah, blood stun. But if you cause enough um, knockout damage, it transfers to blood damage. So so basically, like a henchman uh, would have, say, four health points, essentially, uh, which means he can be knocked out up to four times, and then he can you can try and revive him to get him up, uh, which you do in the consolidation yeah, phase. Yeah, you do at the end of the... In the which kind of jumping. I don't, I don't know where we're at now, but in the consolidation phase, you basically... You roll for each character that basically has any stuns. Yep. Okay. And on a four plus, you you can remove one stun. Yep. But on top of that, if you've got some that are knocked out, if you can uh, roll under their endurance from memory, um, then they can stand back on two d six. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. You got But you got to roll under their under their endurance. Yeah. So, but interestingly, uh, if they got say hit by a blood weapon. They, they bypassed the stars, which was the knockout mechanism, and just received uh, blood blood wounds. Yeah. And if you, you get enough blood wounds, you're out. You're right. So yeah. if you say, for example, you have, say, four knockout tokens and you've got, say, four uh, health, then if you get hit again uh, by a knockout weapon, they transfer to bloods. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So it's an interesting mechanism that I think it's really, it's actually mm. really interesting. It's really I was good. thinking it was with the ninja guy that I was just discussing, like there's other things you can do where you can have handcuffs and that allows you to essentially arrest people that are already knocked down. Just coup de grâme. Yeah. Cuffs on, you're off. That's yeah. it. Sounds so good. little things like that, that yeah. I'm going to pick up as I play more. But to give I suppose to give you an idea of, of this, the, the superhero nature of it, so our henchman was say maybe five endurance, but Grundy had like twelve or fourteen. Fourteen, I think. Fourteen. Yeah, and it, it wasn't just, just that; it was uh, he had some some other rule where um, he's as you take damage too, you become less effective with your the amount of dice you That's get right. in your willpower. Yeah. Yeah. Now Grundy, I don't can't remember desensitized. The, desensitized. Yeah. I think yeah. Bane might also have the same one from memory. Yeah, they don't bother with that. So they're, they, pump, they're always effective all, until they're off. Cylinders. And when you're rocking 14 in, in endurance, yeah, holy crap. It means you can't knock them out because, like I said, you've got to roll under it in 2d6. Well, under, you know, maximum you're going to ever get 12. So yeah, it's not, always, he's always going to get up. Yeah, mm. it wasn't pretty. Yeah. That's what this, yeah. That's what I think I needed to use the sniper more on. Yeah, for sure. In hindsight, was just pinging at Grundy. And I went too quick with Bane. Should have left him back, got some bloods on on Grundy, and then sent Bane up for the punch. I think also the game strikes the right balance between uh, deadly weapons such as sniper rifles and uh, and your baseball bat. Because you think, well, you know, for a start, you've got the darkness element, which is really good, so it limits how effective weapons can be, shitty weapons. But then um, if you move, for example... Uh, rate of fire goes down. Yeah, instead of yeah. I Another it was really good. good point with this game too is you've only got limited ammunition. Ah, so you can't just go around shooting constantly because some 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 of them only have two two rounds. That's it. You got two two turns of shooting, and then that's that's it until you can get to an ammo drop to get more ammo. So that goes into the putting out your um, objectives yeah. and whatnot. You might put out ammo crates to try and get your guys over to those areas so you can k- tap away well, all your extra magazines you in your equipment. Your objectives in our DZ, which so essentially I've got to go to your uh, ammo crate so you can be not gaming. You can't you can get clever. Po- you can't get point. Yeah, from memory, I think the ammo ones you can't get you points don't score for, from them, but you can pull ammo. But out. you can't. Pu- yeah. You can pull ammo. But as I was saying before, that even the objectives themselves have tactics in it because. They've got their own deployment zones as well. Like some have to be deployed sort of like center line. Others have to That's be in right. the other person's um, area. DZ, yeah. So yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a wealth of complexity there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, Greg, you got your notepad there. 
Yep. Any other points that you want to run well, through? Well, I thought um, uh, you, just, you, were, you were touching on it, and I think you know we, we sort of digressed a bit. Uh, balance. How, Dancing how you, around the issue is another yeah. way. I was, I was waiting to say if Marty had How do you think balance up? is in the game? Well, get, all right, you've only played a couple of games. But I've only played a couple of games, um, and I'm playing against guys, well, obviously not you, yourselves, um, <laughs> obviously not so us. Yeah, if, actually, I've only played against uh, Brucey. Um, they've been playing it since the first edition, so the move to second edition, um, they're, they're okay with. Like, it, it's obviously still somewhat the same game, right? Um, so I'm still just trying to learn. So if there's balance issues, it's hard for me to sort of say that. Um, is some character like obviously? Certain characters are better than others, but that that's like any game. Certain characters are going to be better than other characters, and the henchmen obviously aren't as, as good as the main characters. That completely fits. But if you're going to, but actual balance of the the characters, I don't know yet because I don't know enough about the other lists. Yeah, yep. I think for me, balance is going to come down to combos. Yeah, and I see this being a massively combo driven game. Oh, yep, absolutely. you know it's. Getting the most bang for buck out of your, out of your thing, and that, and as I said, that's going to lead to some things being way more effective than others, and stuff just not being included or being auto included, depending on what you're trying to achieve with your combo. So. And I think that's you, you just nailed it there in that. I think it depends on what you're coming into this game to achieve, mm. and what the person you're playing with is trying to achieve. Mm. So. If and I come to you and say, let's have a game of Kings of War, we'll have a really good... I'm looking at Jacob here. We'll have a really good <laughs> game of Kings of War because none of us are going to sit there and analyze the lists for two weeks prior to the game and try and write the filthiest list. Yeah. We just take the models off our shelves and, and let's mm-hmm. go. Let's have a yeah. bit of fun. If you approach this game like that and you have a, someone who, who's willing to do that with you and write those... Write your own stories in in Gotham. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll have a blast. Like this, I I get so excited when I play this game. But then there's also the other element for other people that, you know, maybe the Malifaux players or the Infinity players that want to get into that real, you know, nuts and bolts. There's enough of that in this game for them to get excited over too. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with mm. your statement there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Next up. We have uh, there's something we haven't touched on. Ooh, right. Ooh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so the next on the list is innovation. Okay, innovation. Right, and we didn't touch on the dice and the crit mechanic. And I thought oh, lo- yeah, I loved that's... that. I okay. absolutely loved it. The collateral dice. The collateral yeah. dice. Yeah, which I always call it the crit dice. Well, it is a crit dice. It, it, it is does, right. Yeah, I think it does cause a critical. Like yeah, it, it does. Yeah. yeah. So it yeah, it collateral dice, but but even if they crits. match, if they from memory, if well, hang on. Do you want to run through it? So okay, I'll, so three games in. All right, um, you're the expert in the room. Apparently, um, if you, when you roll to attack and you hit, and then you go to the wounding stage, you, you're rolling a, a, the collateral dice. Okay, now usually you simply, simply you pick a different dice that stands out from the other ones. All right, so you don't get it mixed up. And what you want is you, well, you would prefer it to be a six, but either way, you want it to match one of the other wounding dice and that does extra does extra stuff so from memory if it matches one of the other dice you get an extra stun yeah but if it's a six then it's a it's a it's a crit basically which i think does extra damage or something from memory i don't think i've ever rolled it but some weapons memory, have critical effects as well yeah so yeah. It, it just change it, it it makes the the shot better or the hit better but if it does, if 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 it matches any of those other even if it didn't, even if the that other hit didn't wound, it doesn't matter. That will still in, get you an extra stun, unless it's a one, which then it's nothing because one's nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I loved it, and the fact that uh, some dudes could re-roll the crit dice. So you know you yeah. See, like you, for example, we you know you, you, you got your submachine gun or a machine gun. That was shoots. your guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolled three up, so you got three dice, and then your crit didn't match. But then you got a you got a another to crack so at it. Going, come on, yeah. You know, I really need a two or four or a five, and you roll up the crit dice to try and get that crit. Because it didn't matter what you, you all you wanted it to do, because it wasn't like you needed it. To, it didn't need to to hit something. Yeah, that's right. It just needed, it needed to match. match one of your other dice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought it was. 
Awesome. Well, so would you say that's because I, I you know, I've never, well, I've never, never seen it before. Yeah, I've not seen a mechanic like that before. Well, no. you guys, this is more. You know, you two are probably probably into it more than I'm into. Well, what did you guys think of it? I thought it was awesome. Yeah, incredibly clever. Yeah, because with the every it's it's something that every um, model does in the game. It's just not it's just not down to what superheroes. About, what about the allocation of essentially of the of the willpower dice? Like, did you is that touching on it or? Like as in, oh, I'm going to put six in attack and I'm going to put two in um, special, you know, or however you want I'm going to say it. no. No? Yeah. Uh, like I, it's it's not common. I, I but I think in skirmish games, there's a few where you need to, you know, allocate, sort of allocate orders or at least Cause ha- I know have f- your stuff down. Fantasy Flight, you essentially mm. are telling your unit, ship, whatever, yeah, exactly. what, what you want to do. do. And this yeah. is a way of doing it. That's a little bit tweaked, but I don't think it's yeah. necessarily because most innovative. of the fan- mm. most of the fantasy flight ones are essentially just rotating a dial and putting it down. Yeah, right. Whereas this, it's literally on the card, but it's not hidden as well. Mm. It's plain for your opponent to see. Also, yeah, that's it's that, different. It's, but yeah, then I'll, I, I leave the innovative to you guys. So. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Um, but that's you know, it's not to say it's not necessarily innov- innovative. Um, I found it. I just like. I think it. it's an improvement on what's currently out there, which is you know, it's not necessarily innovative. I think the crit thing, that's sick. It's so it's so much fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What it does is it brings that sort of randomness. I'm not in the randomness, but if you want to talk about engaging, yep. you, you, both sets of players. Yeah. You're not just waiting for that dice. You're like not just waiting for that dice. But you're waiting to see, and you know, and, the, and the re-rolling that stuff, and it get you know. It's the out of the seat waiting for that dice roll moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it can, you know, I think it's, yeah, I'm with you on, on that, Greg. There's another one that we Ooh. haven't touched on. Oh, another one. The pings. Oh, okay. So the way pings work is essentially cover. Yeah. If there's, if, if there's something blocking the line of sight, every hit that you've rolled, you just pick up those dice, your, your opponent that is, and you roll, and if you roll a, f- a four plus, you you take that one off. Mm. So I, I don't think that's necessarily innovative. It's a cover save. You just roll it before the wound roll. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, no, I just he's thought, just talking about a mechanic. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought it's it's um it's an improvement on what's currently out there. I just thought it was incredibly clever in its simplicity. Did simplicity. you like the yeah. Did you like the well, defensive so I think it, then as well? Then, a, for that, pardon? Did did you like the defense that how that? Work for that then as well, where it's like, okay, so you've yeah. done two hits. Well, I've got to use, I'm going to use my two because I'm expecting to get yeah. punched in the face. I've put four in defense. I'm going to pick up my four now and, and roll them it up. It goes back to that uh, allocation of AP, isn't it? So you've got to have the foresight to go, well, where am I going to get attacked? I've got to put, you know, better put some in defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm, you, you don't get a defensive save. If you'd have mm. put no action points in, in defense and somebody close combat to you or, or shoot, you know, not, yeah, you, close you combat are to relying, you. yeah, you're purely relying on their dice rolls yeah, at that point. Yeah, their dice. Yeah. So I think coming back to, to the ping roll and, and the defense rolls as well, yep. you can get away with it in a low model count skirmish game because, you know, imagine in, in 40K, right? You roll this many hits, oh, then no. I roll that many saves, yeah, then no. you roll that many wounds. No. You know what I mean? Like, and then I roll that many invulnerable saves. Like, you can't, you can't. I just liked it because yeah. it was super simple. Yeah. It was like, is there, is there blocking terrain between you and I? Um, oh, sorry, can you see the model? Yes. Is it blocking terrain? Yes. You get a ping, you get a four plus yeah. save. And I imagine certain weapons probably bypass that. And it wasn't that. like, it wasn't like, okay, so you lose this many attacks or no. anything like that. You just, yeah. you know, just roll your it's dice. Four up. You yeah. hit that super many quick, times. Super right, pick effective. Them up. Force. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorted. Yeah. It's clean. Yeah. Mm. Really liked it. Agree. Um, and I think that was, we've pretty much covered everything that I had uh, wrote down. Hmm. Well, there you go. Oh, I think it's probably worth mentioning. There is, um, you can boost your, your dudes. So, for example, you ha- we had NVGs. We had night vision goggles. Oh, you've got equipment that you yeah. can add to your guys. You can boost your dudes. Um, the guys have basically got a, uh, some of the guys, some of the, like, this is the way I kind of viewed the cards with the, the, the models. Like some are almost the special characters, right? You get a special character in Warhammer back in the day, you couldn't add anything to them because that was who they were. That's what they got. That's They're done, right? The henchman is where you can you can most of the time Customize. have a bit of a play. Yeah. And so some of them have like a funding and you can just grab some cards and allocate 
as you see required. Like we were saying before, uh, the goggles, handcuffs, extra magazines, uh, the um, venom is the big one in the Bane crew. So you can give yourself venom to you know pump yourself up before the big fights. You can give these to your guys within the funding restriction and, and you're good to go. Mm. That's That's one of the areas now that I want to start playing with to see if I can use those pieces, those two pieces, a little better. Yep. Yep. And one other thing. Sorry, I just, this is... Is this a big one? This is it. No, no. Ooh. I thought it was really good. Uh, yeah. And again, I, it, I was speaking to Jacob about it during the game. There's no limit to how many objective points you score. No, it just keeps There's going. There's no upper limit. No. So Josh was saying, like, for example, the Riddler, there's some of the, the Riddler objectives you can get up to 60, like in the 60s. For yeah, achieving his he called it the Riddler um, obje- VP farm. Yeah, so there must be just combos. Oh uh, right, just the yeah. Activate, I thought activate, you meant activate, as a total and... score or something. But you mean like he, one objective? No, 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 no as, as in as it's yeah, the game. Cum- cumulative. Oh, c- c- yeah, cumulative. cool, 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 cool. Yeah, right. But the whole say, the whole function of this list is yeah. just farm the VP. Yeah. Because with the riddles, riddlers ones as well, you have to interact with them, and I, you have to roll to see what it does as well. So I think you roll a D6. So don't quote me on this on the numbers, but if you roll a one to interact, some models can't interact with them. Grundy, for example, like he can't interact with any of them anyway, but he wouldn't be able to interact with the Riddler's thing, right? So Bane can, can go up and try and interact with it. He rolls a dice and depending on what you roll, tells you what the if whether you've solved the riddle or not solved the riddle or how well essentially you've solved the riddle. So it's... Crazy. There's a lot to this, yeah. yeah. What's the thing? Like, I don't know how Malifaux plays. Well, it's got an upper limit to, like, it's, if you hit 20, whatever, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Um, but to have, like, no limit, to me, just, it's just mental. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Like, it's, huh? You know what I mean? Like, infinity is a, a, out of 10, essentially. Like, yeah. 10's your limit. That's as high as you go. Like, Kings of War has, has got a limit. I know that. Um, Every other game I've ever played has had a limit. It's the first game that, because like yeah, because because different objectives can be worth different points. Like yeah, the riddle plus, for, as as we just discussed. Plus killing your henchmen, plus killing the the yep. superheroes. Or well, the first time you knock down one of the the, yep. the the bosses or something, you get points for that as well. Yep, so right. it, it there's a lot of points to be had. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to go for. That's great. Cr- and yeah. it's there's a lot of points in the scenarios or objectives. Rather than just the killing. Yeah, see, this is probably where for me it starts yep. going, right, so why don't I, if I'm going to play this in a competitive level, why aren't I just going to run farmy VP list? That's right. What, how can you get the most victory points? Yeah. 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 And then suddenly it's less about, oh, what's themey, what's fun, and what's... Oh, I wouldn't play. want to play this in a competitive yeah. environment. No chance. It's not a not a game I'd be interested in playing not, competitively. Not there yet. I'm not there yet. I Three games in? No. Yeah, it's just I think uh, very hobby. limited exposure, but this is just going from the discussions that were being had the other night. Yeah. It's like, well, it's like, it's a really interesting take to have lists that can just farm VPs. And I don't know how effective they are or what it takes to do it or all the combos and all that sort of stuff, but, you know, it's... I don't know. It's, I get like it's... I don't know those lists. Maybe Bane just rocks up, punches him in the leader in the face, and that uh, that whole farming thing's kind of collapses. Over. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. You'd yeah. hope that's a, a viable you'd, you'd hope. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so too. But like I said, I don't know enough yeah. about it just yet to quote sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, one other thing. This is, uh, this he says is a lot of ones one a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But big shout out to Bruce Meister. Bruce Manor. Holy yeah. jeez. Like. <laughs> What I've never hell? been so spoiled. Are you like at a gaming seriously? Night? So he, you <laughs> off you go because this is ridiculous. I didn't even realize he does this each time you go there. But go on, go on, explain to the listeners. Well, what do you what mean? Happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course, you know exactly what it is. Go on. Well, it's a, it's a roast every time. Well, this all stemmed from when we went and played New Angeles, right? Yeah. And there was leftover roast. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is freaking amazing, and you ate half a kilo of beef. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I had a protein high. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there was a ro- there was roast beef, there was uh, cherry tim tams, which we now realise are amazing. Which your <sighs> significant good, good lady. half has yeah. just corn and got yeah, me. Went at the shop and got got us yep. them. Yeah, uh, there was crisps. There was more tim tams. I can't wait to tell my wife that your missus went and got snacks, 
mid cast, by the way. <laughs> there was a carton of beer bought. <laughs> and quality ones, too. Yeah. There was a carton of beer bought. Yep. There was whiskey. There's whatever you require. Well, I bought the carton <laughs> of beer because I traded him for a 4K. Oh, right, for it. right. So the carton of beer was yours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. But yeah, I right, definitely right, got the better end of that deal. Um, <laughs> it was mental. There was two bo- Batman boards. We played with Josh's painted dudes. Yeah, Rob JT Grundy, yeah. and Big Mike was on the other side. Yes, absolutely yes, painted. Yep. We were totally spoiled. It was an epic night of gaming. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. And then we had um, uh, Jono and Brad were over just to get a glimpse of the, of the Batman Actually, in action, I like to basically. think Brad was there for moral support. Oh, it was good to see him out though. Like I think he was he was quite intrigued and having a bit of having a. a it bit was of a funny because at the start of the night he was just like, "Yeah, no, nah, I don't need nah, any more games. No, nah, 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 I'm not. I'm just nah. here just to have a look." <laughs> and by the end of the night, he was on Dave'sGames.com.au. <laughs> Does Dave'sGames.com.au stock this? Yeah. Yeah, what do you got? What do you, what do you got in stock? Yeah. Oh, I got a little bit, but yeah. I'm about to do another one because I've got to want half the shit for myself. So. Think, if you yeah. if you order the the Talia El Ghul bat box. Uh, the Talia, she's a single. She's a single. You sure? Because there's a new bat box with the. Um, I'll have a look. Lazarus pool and. I'll have a look. Oh, stuff. is this one of the new ones? In the ones with the bikes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I haven't, haven't got, got access to it, that. Yeah. yeah, I haven't got access to that one yet. Lazarus pit, not Lazarus. Pool. Yeah, yeah, I know the one you're talking about. And I have to say, a big shout out to Big Mike on the night for the best suggestion. I don't know if you heard him say, huh. but he said, "Come on, Josh, you need to get a." A gaming table, floating gaming table, so we can play in the, in the pool. pool. In the pool, yeah. I, floating gaming table. Yeah, yeah it's I was looking at pool JT, all night. JT, we fling no, he'd be fine because they float. They would float, wouldn't they? No, they'll drop. Plastic. No, they'll drop. Oh, what? But how JT. good did that pool look all night? I'm sweating oh, yeah, nuts off. Yeah. I was just going. I, if someone says, "Man, we should jump in the pool," I'd be like, "Yeah, let's do it." <laughs> but I wasn't brave enough to do it myself. <laughs> But it's hard Next to be the time. first one to get naked in front yeah, of all those men. Yeah, it's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't cold. It was hot. Yeah, so I have no excuses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he does a good, he does a good um, feed. What? Yeah, what a night. And we finished just before midnight. Well, we didn't finish. Well, actually, interestingly. We so, finished. Cause, so we finished in game turn three and yeah. we bolted at yep. about 11.30. I kept going. So what time, What? What was the end result? Uh, you guys, You guys win. Yes, that's although yeah. technically that you was left. a foregone conclusion after we killed Bane. Although yeah. technically, you guys left the field. Did we kill battle. Bane? We killed Bane. Yeah, oh, okay. I we held the field of, so I erected the trophy. Therefore, I am there's the only winner. one thing that was erected that night, and that's Bane's tombstone. <laughs> but I was happy to report that I did kill Grundy. But Bane died first. Yeah, Bane. Bane went down. Yeah, he yeah. did. Does that mean down. you're going to retire the model? No, fuck no, because. <laughs> Bruce, you just wa- painted him. <laughs> Bruce was basically saying it'll be an interesting fight to see who. But you got you basically got the jump because I came yeah. up the sewer. Yeah. So when you come up the sewer, I've got to just stand there and take it, which meant you got the free swing. You got a, you got a bit of blood yeah. on me. I that was pounded the fuck out of Grundy back, but you got the you. It came down to you did ten damage on him in one turn. Yeah. Of his fourteen. Yeah. But because he doesn't, he's desensitized, it doesn't affect him negatively. Doesn't do shit. He's like, whatever. Yeah. See and you, then man. he whacked me back. Yeah. Yeah. So, shit happens. Grundy is a bit disgusting, though. <laughs> he's gross. He's, he's gross. so good. He's so good. Well, yeah. like, like I said, if I had to play, once I know what I'm start doing, like the sniper, I'm, the sniper. Yeah. That's, he can do a lot. He can do quite a bit of damage with those shots on Grundy. Did we even say that we had the penguin on our, like, we ran a penguin? Yeah, really? penguin. All I remember is Grundy. No. Yeah. yeah, penguin had, did nice. He, penguin. he did nothing. No, the penguin. I was Josh running. Bruce the... was playing. He actually. No, he he well, I was running the penguin down to the objectives. Uh, yeah. The three of them and on my brought... side of the board were going down the objectives. And the rest of you guys ran with him because yeah. they got all the little henchman rules and yeah. whatnot, and and bodyguard and all that sort of jazz. Yeah. Yeah. So that was we were that plan had begun. We just left before it got. And finished. Josh yeah. picked up. Picked no, up you wouldn't. You would have got it because I. I I'm f- I focused too much on just trying to take Grundy out to to play a competitive game. I was just, oh, yeah. that's what I'm doing. 70-30. And I wanted to get a good review out of Greg, so. All right. Well, is it time? Are we chucking it dice is. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Muddy, come on. You're, you're the easiest one. Yeah, let's hear it. Well, after no thought whatsoever, <laughs> I always shoot from the hip. It's not Rumble Slam, so it can't be a six. Which means Ooh. it has to be 
A five. Wait, it's not a six? What not makes six. it not a I six? I would have thought it would be a six straight no. off the bat from no. that. Yeah. What Does that surprise you? It does. Because it's not Rumble Slam. But th- that's not a criteria. That is a freaking criteria. That's not criteria. a criteria. You can't discuss that. sports gym. Rumble's a six. Right, so Rumble's a six. How is this not a six two okay, in your little Let me go through the little checklist. Davesgame.com.au world. All right, I'll go through the checklist. Yep. Okay. One, the text is a little too small on the cards, which I know is an easy fix, but that kind of irks me. Mm. Oh, we should shout out to JT and Mike having A5 size yeah, cards. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Um, it did make them look like the old ladies playing bingo with the jumbo <laughs> cards did, and the it? giant yeah. pencils like... B6. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Where's B? Oh, there it is. Because the front of the card, everything would look massive. It was. It was, yeah. It's like, it was legit like... You could see it from the car park, yeah. right? My my nan, she used to read like the big print novels. Yeah. So they'd be like, you know, like... Four words know. on the page. Yeah. The Da Vinci Code, whatever. And the thing is like 4,000 pages long. Yeah. Because there's like seven words on each page. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but when you flip it to the other side, you're like, well, everything's why. on the front. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I get um, it. I get it. Yeah. I, I downloaded the big cards. Too. Now this to me, this game is like a, is, Teacher Adam, Mal- is very Malifaux-ish. Would I want to take this to a tournament? No, I'm not there yet. You tell me there's a Rumble Slam tournament. I'm there. Heartbeat. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, that's why, and five, five to me is like a blood bowl. So these are these are the top games, but six is, I just feel like Rumble. I don't want to harp on about Rumble all the time, but Rumble ticks so many of the boxes that this this does as well, but just not as many. Like even the resin, like it's resin, cool, low model count, cool. Um, it has a cool theme, awesome. But would I want to play this competitively? No, no, I don't. I, I don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. But I think this is my crunchy game. Mm. This is this is the one that I'll try and be a little. Every time try? you say something that's, like that? that's well thought out and considered and mm. makes sense, I just go, "Fucking what'd you do with muddy?" <laughs> Well, that's how it works. But, but no, no like, I can, yeah, yeah I, I totally get where you come from. Yeah. And if you say Rumble's a six for all those reasons, price points good. Mm. You know, you buy your bat box, I think they're around 80 something, eight, eight, about $80. Is like that what davesgames.com.au uh, has something for? Something like yeah. that. Okay. Have, a look, have a look it up. Um, like, that's a good price point for to get in, and that's your faction. And then you can start fun, getting funky with adding, like I'm about to add some uh, Blackgate Prisoners and Bird and Mercs and start implementing some of I these. I did hear those Blackgate Prisoners were pretty good combo with Bane. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it's for. Yeah. Just saying. And... Just teasing, mate. I'm, I'm going to go over JT's tomorrow, and we're going to go right, through some lists. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, look, it's a five for me, which is means it's it's a top game, um, but it's it just doesn't quite it's it doesn't reach the pinnacle of Rumble. Nice, Greg. Where are you sitting? Ooh. Uh, well, or you want me to go first? Yeah, you first. I bet you do. But go on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah we were on yeah. your swag right here. Yeah, tell us what Greg would give the score. It's a five from me. Ooh, yeah. ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, I um, I saw a lot though that I liked, but I think um, I think the reason why it doesn't hit a six is probably because it's a bit crunchy, like you said. Yep. Actually, um, and the reason that we mentioned there's, there's a couple of ne- like the negatives you already mentioned are the same as what I. Although I, the text on the cards. Didn't bother me that much, maybe because I got perfect eyesight. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, I'm so P3, baby. I actually thought masturbate way too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets late. Like that's why I brought it up. Like when we're playing, it does tend. To, maybe it's 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 getting late. Yeah, I'm starting to get tired. And I'm looking at the like, God damn like, it! Like it's not. I have to. I have to try. Mm. When I look at the card, I don't want to have to try to see the words. I should just look at it and go. They're oh, yeah, cool. They are titchy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we had this discussion on the weekend about um, Delta One Zero and why not we should incorporate that. And I was thinking about it mm. along those lines. Um, but I think for the same reasons you mentioned, the fact that it's too small for some people, I think that's a negative. If if you don't put a lot of text on the back of the card, it'll be it would be fine. But the problem is they've got a lot of special rules and not all of them. And this is the other thing, right? So 
not like Bain, for example, because that's the one I, I obviously use. A lot of it's not even applicable mm. because he's got different special rules that you can choose before the game. So you can choose one of them. So there's a whole bunch of special rules there that you're actually not using, but they've got to put it on the card, which means you've got to have a lot of text well, because he's got a lot of special rules. I don't rules. think you need the rules on the card. You need the keyword on the card. Which to do? Yeah. You don't need the full rule text. I, I would go mm. with that too. Yeah. Um, and then you could maybe print out just mm. some special rules as well. But then it's a small thing. I yeah. could just print out bigger cards. It's not that big yeah. of a deal. <laughs> yeah. But it is a detraction for me. I think also the fact that the pre-game sequence is is pretty involved. Yep. And I can see areas, if it wasn't just us playing, you can definitely see areas where it'd be overcome gaming as, as all hell. You know, with the placement of the sewers and the, the mm. lamppost and that. I can just imagine it's like, ah. Oh. Anyway, so I think that's, yeah, like I'm keen to play more of it. I'd like yep. to play more of it. Um, and the models are beautiful. Like, they're they're amazing. In fact, on the train, I was like checking out the um, the uh, aisle. Was it the House of Isles? No, was Court, it? Of Owls. Court of Isles. Yeah, you the, should just buy that box, man. Yeah, I should. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So look, it's a five for me. All right, there you go. Here you go. So this is, now I'm interested. Mm, I I had to think long and hard about this, and I even mentioned this the other night when yeah. we were gaming. You're like, oh, I'm not sure where you're gonna sit. And I'm like, neither do I. Yeah. Um. It, Everything you guys said about the game, I wholeheartedly yep. agree with. Okay, but there's a couple of other elements for me that come into play here. Is that skirmish games are a crowded market at the moment? Yep. And I'd need something in this to set it apart from something else, and I'm not getting it. There's something in this game that doesn't really grab me. Like can I, I can I just jump in quickly? Yeah. If this was just, you're gonna say if this was Marvel? Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. No, like, no, I get where you're coming from. Because that means you would grab the theme better. Uh, it's not the theme. And and I'm going to say it's the theme that stops this from being a three. Okay. I'm going to oh, give okay. this a four yep. because it feels like Batman. Yep. But everything else about it, I think, like, one, I feel it's for what I want from a game. Yep. It, it just seems too much at the moment. And I couldn't really get into it. Don't let... It, not to say I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I did enjoy it. But I'm thinking, right, if I'm going to spend my time and money on another skirmish game, there's others out there that I would put ahead of it. There's tons of them. And that's that's yeah. why it's a four for me. Yep. There's, the models are great. It's themey as fuck. Yep. And I love that. I love that. But then you get into other things. The complexity of the sequencing, uh, pre-game, yeah. the way the objectives work, the way I feel that it would totally be driven, combo-driven. And that you, your math head, your list crunches are going to just have a field that, day they're gonna have a field day with it. Yep. And that's cool because like, it feels like a game that's built for that. Yep. Like the same way Malifaux is, the same way Infinity is. It's all about getting those best killer lists that do the thing really well and executing a plan really well. And that's great. If that's what you want to do, then power to you. We're not going to tell you how to do your hobby here. Um, but again, for me and for what I want from a game at the moment, I'm really starting to realize this the last 12 months has just become super apparent is that's not what I want to get out of a game. So probably bringing my own biases into it. But that's your review. It's your score. Yeah. Money's giving me the uh, the side eye there. You know what? I, I would actually back... I'd actually, yeah. I'd agree with you because from my own, my own uh, point of view, right now where I am at this point in my life, I like really fast, quick punchy games yeah. that I can easily look at like Rumble Slam right mm -hmm. it is a point in question where we play the tournament you got all your cards there boom it's, it's super simple but it's uh, there's still layers to it there's still complexity whereas I think with Batman um, I, f I find I find there was yeah I, going back to crunchiness hence why it's not a 6 it's, there's too there's almost too much it's like mm. one there's a couple of steps too much they've got some wicked systems and ways of doing things and it's just like just leave it at that you didn't have to mm. do this and this and this to make it oh my god my brain's just melted yeah. Cause and I think if I was writing for a, uh, giving it a review for a magazine or whatever I'd probably rate it high but given this is my, uh, we're allowed to have our own little personal biases in yeah yeah it's one of the reasons that people come to our review plus we haven't got a free they, copy we haven't been given a free copy exactly <laughs> Exactly. Oh, sorry. No one's purchased our <laughs> review. We're not some Disney-sponsored review factory. Motherfuckers. 
Okay. Um, but I can't wait till the Marvel one comes out. I'll be like, oh, six stars. Oh, six stars. Oh, it's just a level four. Because Disney That's sent you a free. fucking free copy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Come on. Yeah. So, like, I, I definitely think, and I think the theme and the models set it at a four for me, mm. which, yep. going by our metric, is that you should play it if you can. Yep. Yep. Out of curiosity, where would you have Malifaux? Um, don't worry about what you said yeah. before. Where would you have now, Malifaux I'd pro- now? I'd probably rate Malifaux a four if we reviewed yeah, it. Yeah, so you'd have them at the at same. At this point in time, okay. yeah. Oh, I think I gave Malifaux a five when we actually reviewed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but the But we changed. had the new shinies and we were right into it and it was kind of up our alley. But then Malifaux is the same. Like when we started, it was you and I playing. It was friendly. And it was that friendly. Yeah. But then suddenly we went into the big bad world and we're like, Oh, oh there's Rad-Aids. sharks out here. <laughs> Rat aids. <laughs> there's fucking sharks. Rat aids just single handedly killed my enjoyment. <laughs> Malifaux. Like little, uh, what is it, cloud, clownfish? Yeah. Quick, get back to the reef. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, we'll go hide now. Fuckers out here with sharp teeth. <laughs> In our fucking, uh, yeah. Beautiful coral. Yeah. But yeah, no, so. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I feel like I'm over justifying what I'm saying. No, but that that's a fair. Like, that's fair. Yeah. And it, like again, if we put the put the IP aside, D- DC and Marvel, I think I'd have exactly the same. Yeah, okay. Person. But like, you know, I'm I do prefer Marvel over DC. Yeah. Story-wise and character-wise. Yep. But DC it's still got its own weight and its own punch and this game comes chock full of that. Yeah. You can't deny that it feels like Gotham on the board. Fucking oath does. And that's amazing. <laughs> But then and it looks awesome. Then you go, it feels like Gotham. Right, let's go punch things. And they're like, before we do that, let's sit down and plan our pregame sequence. Yeah, and there's a like, lot of... Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there's that's that the thing. That's ache the in thing. my prostate. Yeah. I think, I think yeah. though, with, more with more that frequent. though, like that does speed up real quick. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it's... Because and again, once you know your crew... You, you know your crew, you know your list, you know you what know they do, what you, you know what objective you is. You know what you're yeah. doing. Mm. So when, when I say... Cause, and I'm saying that took a while, but I'm still learning. And even I know now... It's going to be, I'm going to go, but you know, patrol and ambush or whatever the hell it was. You're just going to know straight away. That's what I like to do. Your opponent probably even knows what you're going to do at that point because yeah. you, you so you got your way of doing things. It would really speed it up. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I think that was awesome. Awesome. Everything is awesome. Lads, thanks once again for your amazing insights. Thanks for having us. Um, and if you were tickled by um, Batman the Miniatures game and you wanted to pick some up, Greg, where would you go? I would go to my uh, friendly online store, davesgames.com. Yeah, you. check out that loser. Yep. And if he doesn't have what you want, email him. And if he has what you want but you think it's too much, email him and tell him that as well. All right? <laughs> he loves talking about prices with customers. <laughs> Oh, and he loves yeah, comments. Thanks for that. He loves comments. Loves, loves when you do buy comments. Something, make sure you put a comment in. Drop some fire on the comments. Actually, I actually got. Uh, you can put feed, like what you rate, how you rate the products and stuff too. I had yeah. one of them the other day. Oh, you got reviews on your site. I have to approve them though, so that's ah, good. Nice. So, yeah, that's to you, Brad. But um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Was that for the wind up Willie? Did that get a good review? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for the wind up Willie on the website. <laughs> It's in um, gaming accessories. <laughs> yep. 14 inches of the best. <laughs> On that note, I've got nothing else to say. So, Greg, good evening. Good morning. Buddy. Catches. And we'll catch you later. Thanks for listening to Power Stance Gaming Podcast. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. Subscribe and review. You know you love us. quote to put us out I can't think of anything how about Mr. Freeze you gotta everybody choose Every... <laughs> I can't <laughs> no because I, I can't I'd have to practice it